sophomores play uh, game two. And if we can continue it into game two, uh, then, then we'll see how special a, a group we've got. That, that is the old coaching cliche that I was going to ask you. You kind of led me right into it. That's what I love about interviewing you all these years. I think you know what I'm thinking. They, they say you see the improvement from game one to game two. Is there any area in particular? After that performance last week, most people would say no. But is there a particular area where you'd like to see uh, a little bit of improvement? Special teams even looked really good last week. You know, we, 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 we always say we can get better every day. Now, that better may be better at technique better at placement, better at uh, my six inch step is, is uh, rather than a 12 inch step. And so it's all about getting better at technique. Uh, you know, the one thing about it, uh, being at Westwood and being here for so long is that our kids are smart and they, they execute at a high level. So the thing, so the way we play week one is very similar to the way we, that we'll be playing week 10. Uh, so what we try to do between week one and week 10 is get better at the little bitty things, making sure that, uh, you know, because there are ways, you know, some of our twists got too wide, allowed a running back to come underneath. Uh, some of our sprint out protection, we let leakage come through the B gap. And that's just off of footwork and technique. So uh, those are the little things that we were able to work on this week uh, to, to get our kids better. So week two, you get a 25-6A opponent that's coming in here. And th this is, this is kind of cool because you get game two. This, this is no rivalry right here. Uh, Austin High and Westwood, man, this, this goes back a, a few years. So your thoughts, they've got a sophomore quarterback. They've got some youth over there as well. They've got uh, Mike Rosenthal. Your thoughts as the Maroons head here to Dragon. Well, I like the rivalry. I, I, you know, we've had a lot of success against them over the past. I think they've only beaten us one time, and uh, yeah, seven and one. And so, uh, and in fact, that one victory, uh, that guy's now coaching on my staff, Coach Williams. He was the head coach back then. They beat us in overtime. Uh, but to uh, uh, just knowing Coach Rosenthal and the type of program that they have, it's always going to be a good contest. You know, our kids are going to be fairly evenly matched. And, uh, and they're going to come out and play hard just like us, and, and uh, you'll see an exciting game. Horse racing, they call it a mutter. Uh, if it gets a little sloppy, we've got field turf here. Uh, you guys, have you have you been able to practice in the extremes? It's been raining for about three days around here. Have you guys gotten any wet work in? Oh no, uh-uh. We, uh, they, they, I, I, I promise you, there, there's really, there, there's not a lot that you can do. You just try to execute, and you try to. Uh, uh, take the conditions out of the game. If we're playing in them, they're playing in them also. And so, uh, but we do have a rain plan and, and types of plays that we want to run and the way we want to execute the offense and the way we want to execute our defense. And so, um, and it goes down to, I mean, making sure that we've got 40 game balls ready to play. Because if you play 80 plays in a game and you got 40 game balls, that means there's only uh, one, one ball only has to be in the game for two plays the entire night. So uh, playing with cl uh, dry balls is also uh, very important. I love what you told Jeff Power and the guys the other night where you said you don't care how you get 200 yards or how many guys do it. Uh, that, that, that's quote of the week right there. I, I, absolutely. You know, it, 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 you know, a lot of people think we love to throw the ball. I like to win, and, uh, and I don't care how we do it. If we rush for 500 and throw for zero or throw for 500 and rush for zero, I don't care. Uh, you, you know, our kids work hard to make sure that they're ahead by one point on the scoreboard, and that's really what we're going to try and do. Absolutely. That's why we say W for Westwood, W for win. Coach, best of luck tonight. Uh, hopefully at the end of the night, 2-0, and, oh, and get ready to head into league play. All right. So we get ready to go. And again, Stephen, could be a track meet, or who knows, maybe the defense locks it down. Well, you know, either one, you just got to uh, stay in the game, keep keep your head on your shoulders and make sure that um, you go out there and, and, and execute your game plan, really. Uh, you've, been, you've been working all week, uh, implementing, watching film, and you just got to go out there and make sure that you execute the way that you want to execute. And in the end, most of the time that happens, you get the W. Presentation of the colors happening out on the field as it has turned into a Brilliant night for football here at uh, Dragon Stadium. Very, very nice compared to what we thought we were going to be running into. 85 degrees as we get ready to go. Probably somewhere around 79 by the time we're done. Not a whole lot of wind. As they say, perfect football weather. Perfect football weather. So we're going to go ahead and take you down to the field as the Westwood Warrior Band will lead us into in tonight's national anthem.
As always, a brilliant presentation of the National Anthem by the Westwood Warrior Band tonight. And, of course, you can catch them at the half. We will have their weekly performance as well as the Sundancers on our halftime show as well. We will head over to the Whataburger scoreboard. We will keep you updated with everything happening throughout 136A and Central Texas this evening as we do have some really intriguing matchups happening around the state. So we will keep you up to date with that. Taking a look around 136A is what we have on tap tonight. A couple of games already underway. Pflugerville leads Leander 14-7 as they head to the second quarter. Vandy coming off of that big win over Cedar Park last week. They lead Colleen Ellison 7-6. Cedar Ridge and Cedar Park get ready to mix it up. That was a rescheduled game from last night, along with Belton and the Round Rock Dragons. Round Rock on the road heading to Belton. At 7.30 as well, it'll be Harker Heights taking on Stony Point. That's over at the Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex. And at Gupton Stadium, the McNeil Mavericks get to lock horns with the Glen Grizzlies. And, of course, our ball game right here at Dragon Stadium. For the Warriors tonight, they are the home team, so they will be in the gray trousers, burnt orange jerseys, white numerals trimmed in orange with the white helmets, burnt orange and silver feathers with the W on the back for win. Across the way, the Alabama look. It's Texas and Alabama tonight. It's like the 2009 uh, National Championship game here tonight. White trousers, maroon stripe along the side, white jerseys, maroon numbers, Maroon helmets, A on one side for Austin High, the numerals on the other side. Nice jerseys tonight. Yeah, very, very clean look going with the classic Alabama look. Uh, hopefully this game turns out better for the guys in burnt orange <laughs> than it did in 09. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We don't need any Colt McCoy action. Oh, no. Uh, Still a firm believer that uh, Texas would have got the uh, national championship win had he not gone out with uh, that that early injury but totally alas, agree. it is in the past totally agree and that program has not been the same since has not been the same since holden o'kelly will kick it off for austin dropping back deep robbie jing along with the ever dangerous as well nate anderson they'll kick it right to left to get us going here from dragon stadium in round rock game number two wwsn on the kmac sports vibe media network this is going to be fun. Glad you're with us. Settle in. Enjoy the broadcast. We'd love to hear from you. WWSportsNetwork at gmail.com throughout the night. We'll be checking the email box. Here we go. Can Westwood do it again? We are underway, and it's an onside kick. That one along the ground, rolling along at the 40. And he got a big old scrum over there. Austin High may be on top of that. Mike Rosenthal, a little bit of strategery at the beginning of the game, coming out of the bottom of the pile. It's Austin High football. And one, you, of those, and one of those things that you're just not, you're, you're not ready for, um, it looked like we had a guy in position, the ball takes an unfortunate bounce and just pops right out of his hands, and Austin High takes advantage of bounce on it. But uh, put the defense in a tough spot in the, in the early going and see if they can really stand strong and get the ball back into uh, RJ's hands. Absolutely. So here we go. Austin High will get the first crack at it. We talked about it. Charles Wright, he will lead him. Sophomore quarterback. They go right to left. Two receivers split to each side. Single back in the backfield coming up here for Austin High. Just underway, an onside kick from Austin High to start it off. Play clock is at one and stopped. Don't think that ever started. Regardless, here's right out of the gun. The first down play right up the gut. And a nice gain all the way down to the 32-yard line for the ball carrier number 25. That's Grayson Davis. So ground and pound to start it off. Second down and four. After a six-yard gain, so quickly back. Here's right. Same set. Ball on the far side. Hash mark. Two receivers set to each side. Single back in the backfield. Right, the sophomore quarterback. Quickly back up to the line of scrimmage. Now the running back, Davis, scooches over to the left. And a little play action. Quick hitting pass complete inside the 30. All the way down to the 22-yard line. Clitheroe in on the stop. But this offense hitting fast. There's Sawyer Berry for his first reception. Yeah, it looked like a quick uh, check play at the line of scrimmage going in there to uh, see where the see where the DBs were, were playing up, playing a, a little back and just run run a little curl route there. First and ten on the give, running left, turning upfield at the twenty, the fifteen, run out of bounds at the fourteen, and a nice hit there, uh, a little late on the running back Davis. Davis goes out of bounds. Big hit there from uh, Camp Colvin to knock him out of bounds. Great angle on the ball and just comes down and lays the wood to make sure that he uh, remembers who's hitting him next time he tries to run that way. Clock stops 11.03 to go here in the first with the out of bounds play. Trips to the far side, single receiver to the near side. Here's right. He will look to the right and throw across the middle, complete at the six down to the five yard line. 
So Mike Rosenthal, fast offense right here. And they're going right down the field. Ben Coke, his first reception of the night. Yeah, that's big Ben Coke. We said that we had to look after him this game. And he shows, makes his presence known right there with a great little inside route. Just sits down in the defense and waits for the ball to come to him. Gain of five. Second down and five here for Austin High. Two to the far side, one to the near side. Single back in the backfield. Man in motion coming across. And they give the opposite direction out of the backfield. 25 once again. That is Davis. This time the defense does bottle him up down at the four. And that's more like what you want to see right there. Push him back inside so you can wrangle him down without losing, without giving up too much yards. Josh Shupin on the stop. Personnel change into the game. Damon Harris had a couple of big plays last week on the defense. He will now move to the outside edge. Really got to have him step up. Mm -hmm. Third down and three. And here's Austin High back up. Nice tight formation, quick motion across. Two big men in the back. Here is play action. Rolling right, looking pass into the end zone, complete. And just like that, Austin High, the touchdown to the big man, Ben Coke. Yeah, play action pass right there, really with the with the big package, and it just made it seem like they were just going to go heavy, heavy bull run up the middle. Little bootleg and not enough DBs there to cover the four receivers they had just wide open in the end zone. So Austin High strikes quickly. And Jonathan Bryant, the senior, will make his way out for the extra point. So Mike Rosenthal rolls the, rolls the dice on the opening kickoff. A little bit of the onside kick action there. Austin High takes it right down the field very quickly. 9.50, 9.50 to go here in the first. Some confusion yeah. here by the special teams unit. Uh, three seconds on the play clock. Not sure they're going to get this one off. Yeah, it'll expire right there. So they'll whistle that dead and move it back five yards, but... That's the first sign of confusion we've seen from Austin tonight. Yeah, they're clicking on all cylinders on that first drive. Um, got to gotta really take a step back, settle into the defensive mode, and get, get to that quarterback. Yeah. Not really going to say the Westwood defense was out of balance there. I don't really think they were ready to be on the field at this point. Completely agree with that. So they'll go back and regroup. Meanwhile, Bryant's still working on the extra point. There's a snap a little high. They set it down. That one is up and does skirt through the goalposts. 9-5-0, 9-50 to go here in the first quarter. Austin High strikes first, 7 to nothing. Austin High on top. ATX football, the Austin Youth Football League. It all starts when the kiddos are little, especially now with the emphasis on teaching them safety and how to play this game correctly, remembering that that helmet is not a weapon. It's just a part of the safety gear. Well, ATX football, the Austin Youth, Fo Youth Football League, that's how they teach football right there. You can find more information about them on Facebook at ATX Youth Football. They are proud supporters of Westwood football. So now let's see if Westwood bounces back from that. You think they'll kick it deep this time? <laughs> well, I don't know, you know. Seem to we, work. Westwood doesn't seem, that, seem to think so. They're lining up in a onside recovery type formation with two still, still sending two deep back. Yeah, they'll probably try to lay this. In between there's O'Kelly probably doesn't want to kick it to Anderson. Well, I don't think anybody in the state would want to kick it to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And Jing's just about as dangerous, so now the formation shifts back. So now you've got the four in the middle, standing around the 30, the 25. O'Kelly kicks this one, a little bit of a line drive. It's taken by Anderson, a little trouble handling at it at the eight. Four. First down play coming up, going left to right. Quick swing pass out to the outside. Ian Cox handles it at the 18. He'll fall forward all the way to the 21 with a nice second effort there to get down there. He'll be about three yards shy of the first down. Bring up second down and three. Great move after the catch, spin outside, just fall forward. As soon as you know you're going to get tackled, just get as much as you can get. Great play. Trips to the near side, singles or empty set on the far side. Quick play action, swing pass outside. This one complete jing. He's hit on the reception on the when he pulls it in, but he lunges forward for the first down all the way down to the 27-yard line. Nice job by Robbie Jing. Yeah, make, make that first man miss uh, right there. Just kind of squirts out of, the, out of the control of the defender there. Gets, gets enough for the first down. Move the chains. Clock rolls. 9.06 to go here in the first in a 7 to nothing ball game. Austin High on top off of an onside kick. They drive it down the field, the short side of the field. Trips to the far side here for Westwood. Single back in the backfield for R.J. Martinez. He will give it to Mario Debs. Debs, big hole, gaping hole all the way down to the 30. Looked like he was going to get more than that. He gets three. Hole closed up, but again, nice work up front by the big guys. 
Second and seven, ball at the 30. Trips to the far side, empty set here to the near side. Ian Cox lined up as a tight end. Here's Martinez rolling left, throws complete. Mazzola hauls it in, out past the 40. He's got some running room on the outside, out past the 45, down to the 47. There you go, that's how you do it right there. That's the RJ Martinez we saw in the second half last week. Just great poise, roll out, hits his man in stride, lets him, leads the man enough to where he can get, get the extra yardage. Hecti to the far side, two receivers to the near side, rolling this way, complete at the 49, turns up field all the way down to the 44-yard line, and this time it is the Luca Mazzola. Man, there you go. Well, same play, just opposite side of the field, and we talked about it last week with running the ball. It run it till they can't stop it anymore, and they just flip fields and ran the exact same play. Hegde to the far side, and Mazzola will split it out there with him, along with Jing. In the backfield now is Nate Anderson, standing to the left of R.J. Martinez. He will get the give. There's a big hole there all the way down to the 40 to make it the 39-yard line. They'll spot him at the 38. Just he power just, running. Just barely, just barely shoelace down right there. If he would have just shaken his leg free, he could have been to the house. But uh, that's a, it's a good sign for, for Nate there. He's got a good, powerful run looking tonight. Uh, keep, keep those legs churning and get him a couple scores this week. Indeed. Three-yard gain on first down, second down and seven. They spot him at the 39, 748 to go in the first. Motion man across is Robbie Jing. Here's Martinez. Quick roll left, looking, turns it upfield. Mazzola hauls it in at the 35. He's hit right there. He'll get to the 34. Mazzola, the hot hand here and that's in that the first quarter. That's that exact same play. If they're not going to defend it, we're just going to keep running out a little short out route to the flat. And it looks like Martinez has got that throw all day long. Indeed. Here's your third down and two play from the 34. Two receivers to the near side, single receiver to the far side. One back in the backfield, and the swing pass is complete. That'll be a first down turning upfield once again inside the 30, all the way down to the 29, just like clockwork. This time it's Mohan Hegde, and we work towards the seven-minute mark. Westwood turning down the field. I really like these quick throw play calls that they're, that they're getting, getting the ball out of Martinez's hand quick, build that confidence early in the game. And uh, just leading this drive down the field looks really clean right now. Mario Debs back in the ball game. He will line up to the right of R.J. Martinez. Two receivers split to each side. Ian Cox checks out of the ball game. Here's Martinez out of the gun. Three-step drop, looking downfield. Pressure coming. Pass complete over the middle. This time, once again, is Mazzola inside the 20 all the way down to the 16-yard line. And that'll be another Westwood first down. It just goes through his progression right there. He didn't have his first receiver. He got a little pressure on the backside and just dumped it down to his cross man right there and picked up enough for the first down. Talked about the possibility of a track meet tonight. We're heading that way. It's Julian. Looking like it. Yeah, Ju Julian DeBerry checks out of the ball game. So that will bring Cox back in, Anderson back in as well. So now you got Anderson and Mario Debs in the ball game. First down and 10 play here from the 15 with 6.33 to go in the first. Motion man is Anderson across. He'll take it on the jet sweep trying to turn up field. Pardon me. That was a great play action once again. Martinez all the way down to the five. Sure fooled me. I, I'm calling him down at the 20, and he's down at the five. Jeez. Well, yeah, it, it, looked like, it looked like Austin High had, had Nate, Nate bottled yeah, up, which yeah. they did. Dead to right he didn't there. have the ball. Yeah. yeah, they tackled him in the backfield, but the guy with the ball is down at the four. First and goal. Told you guys I had new contacts. I didn't think they were going to be that bad. Jeez Louise. Well, that's okay. I got great vision. I was fooled <laughs> yeah, on that one, too. Yeah, you got fooled on that one also. I think that happened last week with Martinez. It did. It, it did. did. He's, got a, he's got a good play action. First and goal. Here's Martinez. Looking, rolling right. Pressure coming. He'll be dropped. Nice blitz coming across. As that's David Williams, and he drops Martinez for about a four-yard loss. And really, you see there, you see the first little bit of inexperience on this drive show. He gets under pressure. And, and throws, tries to throw the ball away in what could have been considered a, a lateral mm -hmm. or a fumble. So lucky to get away with that one, but really got to punch the ball in the end zone here with, uh, to, to cap off this fantastic drive so far. So that'll bring up second down and goal. They work from the four-yard line, 6.02 to go in the first. Seven to nothing, Austin High on top. Three receivers splitting out here to the near side. Hegde, Mazzola, and Jing. In the backfield is Debs. Here's Martinez awaiting the snap. He gives it to Mario. Mario digging, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Westwood. Four yards the hard way for Mario Debs. Fantastic run right there from Debs. He uh, looks like he's going to get bottled up at the two and just takes his, his small frame and ducks underneath the defender, gives a little extra second effort dive there, gets in the end zone, put up six, 
And let's see if Cactus Jack can tie us up here. Uh, absolutely. Here he comes. Cactus Jack Elliott on for the extra point. Jingle set it down. It's a good snap. That one is up. Splits the uprights easily. Got a good one going on here tonight. Weather's holding out. And we're hanging on good. 5.57 to go here in the first quarter. Westwood 7, Austin High 7. Warrior football will continue in a moment. White Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. Purchase a copy of this or any KMAC broadcast for personal use and portions of the proceeds go to your school. Whether you're making a highlight video or just want to be able to enjoy this game years in the future, send us a note to info at kmacsports.com. That's I-N-F-O at kmacsports.com. We can even do some editing for you for a small fee. Purchase any broadcast for personal use. Hit us up, info at kmacsports.com. Bringing your teams and your highlights to you. We are KMAC Sports. WWSN powered by KMAC Sports and the Vipe Media Network. 7-7 seven seven ball game. Austin High with an onside kick to start the contest. They go right down the field, kick it to Westwood. Westwood drives straight down the field. We are knotted at 7 here in a battle of 13-6A and 25-6A. We keep hearing all the excitement of those two districts, Stephen. Here we go. We've got a preview right here. Great, great looking preview. You know, nine teams in both of those districts last uh Last non-district game for, for both these teams to prepare, and it's, it seems to be uh, one of the tougher situations in the, in the state. Elliott kicks this one. It'll sail out of bounds out there around the 20. Definitely trying to keep that away from Jordan Mitchell. Mitchell was back deep over on the far side, and that's, that's a guy that he likes to run, and he runs fast. <laughs> but it'll be first down for Austin High. Their second drive of the ball game. This time, much better field position if you're a Westwood fan, pinning them down on their own side of the field this time. Still still a 40-yard line, on, or is it the 30-yard oh, line? Yeah, it should be the 30. I think there may have even been an illegal procedure call, I think I heard them say. I don't know if somebody maybe across the line just a little too fast, not supposed to take off until Well, then, the yeah, she'll take, the you'll take, you'll take the, uh, the opposing team on their own 30 over the opposing team on your 42 <laughs> yeah. to yeah. start their drive every day of the week, yeah. especially on Friday nights with the lights on like this. Absolutely, every day and twice on Sunday. Here we go with 5.57 to go in the first, tied up. Two receivers split to each side. Right out of the shotgun, single back in the backfield. All kinds of movement across the front there, and you see B, big Ethan Brown comes across. Knocked one of those guys back. That one should be against Austin High. That's something those those defensive linemen love to see. They love to see a little bit of motion on the O line, and then that just gives them free reign to give a little a little extra curriculars to the O line there and let them know that they're coming. Yeah, a little bit of a open shot, wide open shot. Four man front from Westwood, first down and fifteen from the twenty five. Here's Wright looking downfield. He's got time. Throws it to the near side. That one incomplete. Nice coverage back there by Zach Hoover. As Hoover with the one on one coverage there with Coke. Defense seems much calmer already. That's going to be a matchup that if, if we're having if we're having Hoover on Coke all game, that's going to be one to watch to, to watch because Ben Coke is six five, Hoover is not. That's a yeah yeah. We, that that Coke is a super size, a big gulp. A big gulp, absolutely. Running right, it is Mitchell out of the backfield. He'll bounce all the way down to the twenty eight. Gain of about three yards there on first down as they're trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage off of the penalty. It'll bring up third down and long. Looking at third down and 11 here. So the defense pinning Austin High back as we've seen the, the momentum slow down quite a bit here on this drive. Trips to the near side, one back in the backfield. Single receiver to the far side. Right throws complete on the far side at the 38, turning upfield to the 40, down to the 41. That'll be a first down. Nice completion there to Colebacker. And that's a, that's a really tight throw there from, from their sophomore QB, Charles Wright, uh, just to move the ball, move the chains. Got to got, got play, got play more pressure up on the DBs there. Mitchell in the backfield. He'll take it on the zone read. He's quickly bottled up from behind as Ethan Brown once again blitzing across. Didn't give Mitchell a whole lot of time to get anywhere. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Brings second down and 10. Working towards the five-minute mark to go here in the first quarter. Tied up at seven. 
here from Dragon Stadium on WWSN. Back out of the gun is right. Trips to the near side, single receiver to the far side, one back in the backfield. Quick look over to the sideline. Plenty of time on the play clock. Faking the run, looking downfield. This one complete over the middle. There's Callbacker once again. Beats the coverage at the 20, the 15, two men to beat. He's bottled up at the 10 and knocked down there. But he gets inside the coverage. And it's a big hitter there for Austin High once again. Colby Callbacher. Fits the throw into a little tight window there. DB just barely misses it by his fingertips and, and then isn't in the right play to make the tackle in the right position. Sorry about that. Demetrius Jones on the stop, running towards the outside, trying to turn up field. No, sir, will not happen. Run out of bounds is Jordan Mitchell. So the defense quickly back. There's Brown once again. And that's the, de and that's the defensive front you want to see. Uh, stringing the play out wide, making sure your DBs can make a play on the ball. Lost, lost a couple yards there. Ochoa in on the stop as well with Colvin. Two receivers to the far side, single receiver to the near side. Third, second down and 11. And here's Wright's pass, throwing one into the end zone. That one almost had a one-handed grab. Great coverage there from Hoover as he was on Sawyer Berry. So the secondary making some nice plays here early on in the first. Man, Hoover is a scrappy DB out there, doing everything right, pushing his man just far enough to the boundary to where he couldn't come down with the ball inbounds, and the throw was just a little bit wide. Clock stops with 4.01 to go on the incompletion. Third down and goal. They work from the 11-yard line. Here's right out of the gun. He's going to send three receivers to the near side, two to the far side, empty backfield for the third down play. Here's right. Two-step drop. Throws that one incomplete. A little confusion there. He had Coke. Think he was going for Coke. Coke goes to the inside. The pass goes to the outside. He had Barry in the end zone, not even close. A little miscommunication there from the offense, but uh, good stand right here from the defense after giving up that big play. Hold them to in a field goal attempt and see if you can get up, get a hand on the ball, maybe uh, save your team some points on the board. And yeah, nice stand there by the Westwood defense. Other than the one play, other than the callbacker completion there that was the bulk of that drive. And it'll be a field goal attempt. 29-yard attempt coming up here for Austin High as Jonathan Bryant, that one is whistled dead. And he's probably lucky that that was whistled dead because he had some pressure coming from Demetrius Jones from the outside. Just got a great break on that snap. Read it perfectly and was in there too. He was going to block that kick. He was. He absolutely was. And they'll back it up five yards. That one against Austin High. And Mike Rosenthal will send the offense back out. Fourth and goal. Now the line of scrimmage is a 16. So here comes Charles right back out with all of his offensive teammates. Well, that'll tell you something uh, for later in the game. Maybe not, mm -hmm. maybe not so confident about the kicker from this distance. So that's something for Coach Wood to keep in his back pocket and remember. We have seen some shootouts between these ball clubs. Westwood leads this series 7-1, seven, seven games to one. Here is Wright. He's got all kinds of time. Pass over the middle. Ben Cook in the end zone. Touchdown, Austin High. Just like Coach Rosenthal drew it up. Jeez. Man. That is, that is a big target and one that you have to make sure you cover. We'll say it a lot all night, I have a feeling, if this is going to be the kind of shootout that we think it is. Ben Koch is going to get open a few times, and he's going to make some plays, and he made, a, he made one right there. Two touchdowns on the night for Koch. He was one of your keys to the game to stop. And he is accounting for both touchdowns here so far. And it, it, whenever Coke gets off the line like that, you got to make sure you give him, if, if you're a defender in the area, just give him a little nudge before he gets to that five-yard uh, mark to where you can't contact him anymore to make sure that he doesn't, he doesn't get to run just a perfect straight route. He has, to, he has to correct a little bit, and that'll throw the, the quarterback off just a bit. Bryant's kick up and good, 3.48 to go in the first. 14 to seven, Austin High leads here over your Westwood Warriors from Dragon Stadium. Fabulous, fabulousaffairscatering.com. If you've got something you're an event, whether it be a business gathering, party planning, whatever it may be, and you need a caterer, you need to call the friend of Westwood Warrior Football. Fabulousaffairscatering.com. Check them out online. Exquisite food, expert coordination. Said it last week. That's the hardest part. I can plan some darn good parties. Might be able to have a pretty good menu put together. It'd be pretty simple if I'm doing it, but the coordination's the hardest part, and on top of that, gracious service. That's huge. Customer service is what it's all about. That's what this company offers. They will take care of your event. Fabulous Affairs Catering, that is www.fabulousaffairscatering.com. 
Westwood.com. 14 to 7, our score. Here from Dragon Stadium, R.L. Peters Jr. Field, Dr. R.L. Peters Jr. Field. Here on the campus of Round Rock High School, as we said, Round Rock on the road. They're taking on Belton in a rescheduled game from last night. Here's a kickoff. This one will bounce at the 16, and it is taken by Jing. Gets to the 20, where he is met there by a host of Austin High Maroons. He'll be spotted at the 21, so the back and forth continues. The three offensive drives, three scores on the board, 14 to 7. Now it's Westwood's turn. Just looking to uh, continue the momentum they had in the last drive, uh, starting only about seven or eight yards further up the field than they did last time, so no reason why they can't keep the game plan together. Uh, maybe try and run the ball a little bit more to open up a, a, a wider, a deeper pass, a deeper ball down the field, uh, excuse me, but, you know, stick to the game plan, keep doing what works, and tie this ball game back up. As we said, with that defense, not a lot to frown about there. It was one play that did him in on that drive. So here's Westwood left to right on the give. Anderson, he's got running room, turns up field, gets to the 30 all the way down to the 34-yard line. You see the power, you see the speed, you see the burst. First down, 14 yards for Nate Anderson. And the vision, the fantastic vision to take a couple extra cutbacks to get more yardage. Trips to the near side, empty set to the far side, one back in the backfield. Here's Anderson once again, the 40, all the way down to the 45, lowers the shoulder, 11 more yards on back-to-back -back first downs. They'll move the sticks again. And just again, right before he gets to the line, he's supposed to go to the left, cuts it back to the right where the hole is, and he gets an extra six, seven, eight yards for the first down. Anderson stays in the contest. Hegde and Mazzola to the far side. Ian Cox and Jing here to the near side. Anderson in the backfield. Here's Martinez. Takes a snap. Gives it to him again. Big hole. Midfield. The 45 to 40. One man to beat. The defense converges as they get him at the 30 down to the 28. As we work towards three minutes to go, Nate Anderson, give that man a rest. Absolutely. Fantastic run and just, just great angle from the defender. He would have been in the house. 106 yards last week for Nate Anderson. He's on the path once again. Two receivers each side. Here's Debs back in the game. He's got running room. Just pounding the rock. Old school football right there. Haven't thrown a pass this whole drive. You get eight yards on first down. And Coach Wood is saying, okay, we've got our, we've got our, our veteran offensive line here. We're going to use them, and we're going to run the ball down your throat until you stop it. Keep All doing it. All upperclassmen right there working in the trenches. 2.32 to go here in the first. Here's Martinez. Quick swing pass complete. Mazzola at the 18. Turns up field at the 15. Down to the 13 to make it the 12-yard line. He'll actually be spotted probably at the 13. So Luca Mazzola with some nice moves when he gets a hold of that football. And great great block on the edge there by Hagdi to, to open up a little bit of extra room to get just enough for the first down. Love how you watch those hamburgers up front. Look at them all. They're all looking at the sideline. They're getting that play. They're ready to go. You don't have hands on the hips. Those guys are primed and ready. Here's the first down play from the 13. Martinez, he will keep it off of the play action. Runs to the outside and slides down at the 10. Nice job there by Martinez to avoid the hit because he had three guys coming right at him. And you get five yards on first down. Take that every day. You and just a smart, aware play by, by a young QB to slide and not not take a big hit because you know that these defenders are trying to trying to hit him I'll tell you the poise of martinez continues to amaze me just the job he's been doing here three receivers to the near side single receiver to the far side motion man is ian cox across here's martinez rolling right looking downfield into the end zone for mazzola a little bit of contact there let's see if we see a flag it looked like mazzola turned inside on a curl route and he fell and they will attribute that to the turf monster but there may have been some tripping, tripping up going back there, but way too close to call. I think, I think there may have been a little contact, uh, but it looks like their feet just got tangled, and that's, that, that's an unfortunate one. But come back, you can still get the first down here without scoring a touchdown. Had Mazzola made that cut, I think Martinez would have laid that in nicely. I think it was but, right, right in the right position. And timeout Westwood. As Coach Wood will bring the offense over with 1.28 to go here in the first quarter. Want to make sure. Third down and seven coming up. As Steven said, you get down to, need to get down to about the nine-yard line to get the first down. Or pardon me, you actually need to get down to the four-yard four, yeah. line. Yeah, get down to the four-yard line to get the first down. And a new set of downs. But, man, we advertise a track meet pretty much what we've gotten. 
And the way, yeah, and, and, and the way this Austin High offense looks to be rolling right now, you really need to get this seven points on the board and tied up. You you, you got to get points in general right now, but you really want to put on these seven points to tie this game up and then let your defense come on and set the tone. Yeah. That defense, defense a little bit off their mark right now, but I think a lot of it was, and you know how this works. I mean, the game plan was Westwood assumes that the offense will be out on the field first. The defense is thrust into, into action here, but not to take any, anything away from Austin High, Ben Koch has been very hard to contain. He has been the show up to now for Austin High. And he's going to be that way all season for a lot of different teams. I mean, they don't just build him like that every day. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's exactly right. That is a big dude. We were talking before we went on the air. I, I'm not sure what they feed these kids anymore. Oh, it's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's unreal, and, and they, they eat six times a day. Yeah, and it's, yeah. It's those new Whataburger triple meats. <laughs> I, prefer, I prefer the uh, honey barbecue chicken strips yeah. sandwich, if you ask me. And you can get them at 13201 Ranch Road 620. That's at 620 and Lake Creek. Whataburger, proud supporter of Westwood football. Third and seven. Here's Martinez taking it, run all the way. Turns up field at the 10. He'll gallivant into the end zone. Touchdown, Westwood. And on that play, one excellent play call by Coach Wood. But what no one's going to talk about is the block thrown by Debs there. He goes out as a lead blocker and throws a beautiful, beautiful cut block to get the linebacker on the ground. Martinez recognizes it, cuts up field, walks into the end zone. Fantastic play. Cactus Jack Elliott out of the hole to Jing. That one up and true. And just like that, 121 to go here in the first. Shootout going on here at Dragon Stadium in Round Rock. We are 14 apiece right now, just as advertised. Man, you got to love this, the 6A football when you get two teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe right here. And, the, and these two teams, if you look at some of the projections, and again, we talked about projections and opinions last week in game number one. But if you look at a lot of these publications and, and the pundits that talk, Austin High and Westwood, when you look at 13-6A, 25-6A, they're in that same spot where they're in that 4-5-6 region. And these two teams seem fairly equal to this point. And that's one of those things you really got to relish in this moment if you're on either team getting to play in this kind of situation. You know, these they, they say it all the time. These ones aren't going aren't gonna to count towards your district competition they're not going to matter whether or not you have a chance to play for a state title later or make the playoffs and so it's one of those things you really use this time to see how you play up against those competition uh, the other competition and and how you react to certain situations and and right now after getting just punched in the mouth to start the game the warriors have come out and have responded when they needed to and responded well and let's see if the defense can come out here and set the tone. Absolutely. This will be the time for the defense to take over the ball game here in what will be the third drive for Austin High. Here's a kick from Elliott. He'll kick this one high and short, keeping it away from the deep man and run out of bounds at the 30. So about the same starting field position as the spot will be the 31-yard line in a 14-14 to -14 ball game. Rodney, I know that they want to keep it away from the deep man, but I still would not kick it to Big 87 no. right there. He looks like he could no. run through about six different yeah. people towards the end zone on a, on a return. And so I may, I may try and kick it to the other yeah. side next time. That's but, but they corralled him on that one, and if they can continue to do that, then, then all right. But you never know. He's, a, he's an impact player like we talked about, and he can make something happen very quickly. That, that's like handing a very thirsty man a five-gallon jug of very cold water right there. Absolutely. 118 to go. Here is the give on the zone read. Spinning out of one tackle. May have been a holding call back there or a hold. Don't know if we'll get that call down the lineman and, and was right there in Wright's face. Devin Quintanilla splits out in the slot to the right. Two receivers to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Swing pass complete out of the backfield. Drops it and goes out of bounds. That one could have been a fumble as Jordan Mitchell swinging it out of the backfield, not able to get a hold of it. I think he turned up field before he actually had the ball. I don't, I don't think he was going very far after he caught it. We had a couple of good defenders closing in there. Uh, but if you're Austin High, you got you to you make that catch just to at least give yourself a chance to get a couple of positive yards. Defense forces Austin into a fourth down, fourth and four here from their own 37. Offense stays out right, trying to draw the big guys across the line. Quick look over to the, uh, or to the sideline once again. Here's right back up to the line of scrimmage. Probably a play coming here to Coke. 
You'd think. Fourth down at four. Play clock at 15. Here's Wright's pass complete across the middle. That one incomplete. In and out of the hands of Devin Quintanilla. And it'll be Westwood ball going the other direction. 35 seconds to go. This offense has been fast. That's plenty of time for the good guys to get down the field. Great stand there by the defense. And that, that, that was just kind of the first bobble we see from, from quarterback Charles Wright. A little bit behind on the throw, but the, the coverage was there. The it coverage was. was all over him. And uh, I don't really think he was going to go very far if he, if he even was able to make the catch. He had DBs draped all over him. We said this could be the stand the defense needed to take over the ball game. We'll see if that works. First and 10, Westwood takes over at the Austin High 37. With 35 seconds to go here in the ball in the first quarter in a 14 to 14 game, Jing here to the near side, two receivers to the far side, pass complete, little bubble screen. This is Mazzola turning upfield at the 35, the 30, finding the far sideline, driven out of bounds. No, he's not. All the way down, touchdown, Westwood. 37 yards, penalty marker on the field at the 36. Let's check and see the play or the call. Looks like that will be against. I see him pointing towards Austin High. What a beautifully executed bubble screen for Mazzola. Looks like they're bringing it back. Might have been a hold right there on the edge. The referee over. Looks like they're, looks like they're probably going to call a hold there on Hegde. Is, uh, he came off. Here's Cactus Jack Elliott. We know you want to hear commercials, folks, but we just, we're not able to give them to you tonight. It's happening too fast. Kick is up and good. Cactus Jack Elliott stays perfect on the season. As it's well just, as with his field goal. It's just one of the prettiest looking kicks I've seen from a high school kid in a very long time. It's it's pure. It's straight up the middle every time. It's got more than enough distance. It's got hang time. It's got height. He's got a he's he's got a powerful leg, and it's really really useful. Like we talked about last week, yeah. to have that on your team in any given situation. Saw a super cool tweet last week from the Westwood soccer team as. Cactus is one of their guys. I wonder if he knows his name is Cactus yet. So I'm sure he does because I think they go back and listen to this. But uh, they were totally excited when he kicked that 33-yard field goal against Eastview because that's the first points of the year for the football team and coming off of the foot. And he, he has been. He's been phenomenal. Just a beautiful, beautiful ball when he puts his foot in it, as you mentioned. So Westwood ahead, 21-14 to here in the first quarter. <laughs> quite, the, quite the clip we're going at here. I think it, I think at halftime we might have to line them up and see who runs a hundred yard, a hundred meter dash right. faster. Yeah, absolutely. Jordan Mitchell drops back deep. Here is the kick. They will kick this in the direction once again of Coke, and that one will bounce around the 32, maybe the 33 yard line. This time they're just keeping it away from everybody. It seems as though with the way with the way that defense was able to stand last drive, that Coach Wood is content letting them start at their own 30, and. He, he likes the way his defense is playing. You know, a little bit on your heels like we talked about at the very beginning of the game. You think your offense is going to get the ball and you're going to have a, a drive the length of the field to be able to, to sit down with your unit, talk about, talk about the things you discussed earlier on in the week, but that wasn't, that wasn't the case and they were thrown onto the field quickly. And it looks as though they've settled down. We'll see how they react on this drive. But it looks like they came to play tonight. Good problem to have. A lot of confidence in your defense. That's, that's something that's always good. 26 seconds to go. Here we go. Here's Austin High. Still going right to left in the first. They do the reverse. Looking downfield, trying to turn up field. There he is. Will Clitheroe on the stop. Drops him at the 40. Three-yard loss as they try the trickery. Does not work. Read it like an absolute book. I mean, I was about to be fooled on it. I saw him coming around, and it looked like there was nothing but burnt orange on the far side of the field. And then Clitheroe comes around yeah. and says, nope, I'm right here. Great breakdown, doesn't get juked, wraps him up. Phenomenal play by the linebacker there. And that will end the first quarter. We've seen now three quarters end on phenomenal plays for Westwood here this year by the defense. This time it's Will Clitheroe. Got a good one going on here from Austin High, one or from Round Rock High. One complete. Westwood leads 21-14 to 14 over the Austin High Maroons. Westwood football will continue in just a moment. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companions. 
companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you're needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. Flix Brew House, proud, proud supporter of Westwood football, right here in Round Rock off of I-35 at 2200 I-35. Special thanks to those fine folks. They hosted the Varsity Retreat a little bit earlier this year. First Run Cinema and Brewery. Go check out your favorite movies and enjoy a cool beverage with them. FlixBrewHouse.com, sponsor of Westwood football. Second down to 12 as we start the second quarter. 21 to 14, Austin High will go left to right. Here is Wright looking, pressure coming. Throws that one in and out of the hands of Coke. Somebody might have gotten a hand on that one. That ball looked just a little bit wobbly. A little wobbly, but one of those balls that Coke has to come down with. I mean, it's hit him right in the hands. But what I mentioned earlier when he scored the touchdown is I was watching the linebackers and someone was there to knock him off his line a little bit. Someone gave him a little bump to, to let him know, hey, you're not just going to roam free around the middle of the field. Right. We're here. And uh, that may have caught him off guard and, 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 and thrown off his, his hands a little bit there. So here's Wright. Davis stands in the backfield. Three receivers to the far side, single receiver to the near side. Motion man across. A little bit of a fake. Wright steps up, throws to the near side, in and out of the hands. Great coverage once again. This time it's Demetrius Jones. Didn't really see the secondary tested last week by Eastview. Austin High's testing them. They're living up to it. Oh, and he was he was right there. He played the he played it perfectly. Didn't didn't get too much didn't get too much of the receiver to to draw a penalty. Made a play on the ball. Phenomenal defensive play by the cornerback. And that was Callbacher. He had the big hitter in the first quarter, and the defense locks him down. Nice adjustments here by the defense. Defensive coordinator Brad Pugh. And Austin High will punt it away. Fourth down and twelve. Ball at their own forty. As Robbie Jing drops back, he stands at the 30, and that dude's got wheels. Little high snap, way over the head. Here comes Ethan Brown. Pressure coming, trouble back there inside the five, rolling, trying to get rid of it. Garrow Ukrainian, he just throws it out to the 20, and the special forces in on the action now. That's how you take over a ball game right well, there. That's, that's exactly right, and... Uh, you do have to give credit to, to the punter there for Austin High. Heads up move, you'll get that ball and throw it out of bounds so you're not turning. Drive it down the field to lead 7 to nothing. But since then, it's been Westwood. They traded a couple of scores, but now the Warriors lead 21 to 14. Here's Martinez. Two receivers to the far side, single receiver to the near side. On the give, running it up the gut. Anderson bouncing off all the defenders all the way down to the three-yard line. Nate Anderson, power football. I was just going to say, look for a heavy dose of uh, Nate the great Anderson here. He's just one of those guys where you get inside the 10, he's going to get you at least two every single down. And, you know, that's all you need to get in the end zone. Sophomore. It's crazy. Here's Martinez out of the gun. Takes it. Rolling right. Looking. Shovel pass underneath. Ian Cox tries to stretch into the end zone. He'll be short from the one. Cox had two scores off a shovel pass last year in one ball game. Thought he might have another one there. He stopped just a tad bit short as we go under 11 minutes to go in the half. We scored, a, we, we scored a touchdown on that play last week, and you could tell that it was in it, Austin High was well aware that uh, that play was going to get run at some point because he looked like he was going to walk into the end zone, and it got, it got shut down real quick. Third and goal from the one. Here's Martinez. Anderson is there. RJ into the end zone. And a penalty marker in after the play. For now, it's Martinez on a one-yard scamper holding the call against Westwood, so that will negate that one. No wonder, got, that, no wonder that looks so easy. Uh, yeah, well, and they, got, <laughs> and they got Nate Anderson on that one, uh, just, trying, just trying to set a block. But what I was going to say before the penalty, um, it really helps whenever you have a quarterback that can run the way, the way that RJ can because it just you have no one to account for him unless you have a spy. And if you have a spy, you have to bring a safety down, and then it opens up the middle of the field, and it's just an added element that is a good problem to have. 10-yard penalty, third and goal from the 11. Here's Martinez on the underneath pass. Turning up field is Hegde. He'll be dropped at the 5. That's coming in on the stop was Deion Thompson. But a nice job by Hegde to get open and get down to the 5. Kind of slipped under the coverage. And that'll bring up fourth and goal from the 5. 
decision time for Anthony Wood. He wants to go ahead and take control of this game and grab it by the horns and, and uh, take command of it real quick. Worst case scenario, you pin him back in the shadows of their own goalpost. Here's Martinez. Timeout will be called by Anthony. Co oh, he was sprinting down the sideline. We were talking about how good a shape he's in. You saw it right there. Nice speed down the sidelines from the old guy. What do you think? 4 2 40 on that one? At or? least. <laughs> At least. He's trucking along there. And we have our, uh, our yearly Anthony Wood uh, cap watch. The cap has not come off this year, as far as I know. I, I, think, I think Dr. San Cal is the one that keeps an eye on that. I don't remember it coming off. No, it's, uh, it's been a pretty good game, so you know, no heated <laughs> arguments with the, yeah. uh, the umpires or anything. Uh, everything's been going rather smoothly. Complete package game so far. Yeah, so he's kept the cap on, and, and everything's been working. Hey, while we have a break, Whataburger scoreboard 13-6A halftime. Old District uh, foe, Pflugerville, now leads Leander, 17-7. That's a halftime score. Second quarter score, Vandy on top of Colleen Ellison, 21-6. Cedar Park and Cedar Ridge, no score in the first. Belton leads Round Rock, 21-9. Stony Point leads Harker Heights, 25-16 at the half. And McNeil, midway through the second, leads Glenn, 12-7. How good does that Vandegrift team look mm. after putting it on Cedar Park last week and now doing, doing it again this week? Drew Sanders does a great job over there. They're at Monroe tonight. They've added some seats there. I bet that place is filled to the rafters. Fourth down from the five. Here's Martinez. Going to hand it. Now throwing Jing into the end zone. That's got to be a That's penalty. That's definitely a penalty. As he was looking for Mohan Hegde back there in double coverage, and they just drive him out of bounds. Drove him like a car. That's the easiest That's the easiest penalty these refs will call all season. No one tried to turn around to make a play on the ball. They just jumped up, put their hands in the air, and, and got every bit of Hegde right there. So catch a break there, new set of downs from what I assume will be about the two-yard line. And um, I would uh, take about four downs to just see if you yeah. can pound this one in with either one of your running backs here. And that was Sawyer Berry back on the coverage for Austin High. That's an Iron Man football right there. That, that football player, that guy, he uh, – he works hard. He goes both ways, and you see him there as they get him on the foul. First and goal here from the two. 9.57 to go in the half. Two receivers to the far side. Single back in the backfield. Motion man across his Cox. On the give. In easily Mario Debs. Scores there's, his touchdown tonight. There's that offensive line. I tell you, they just get a, they're getting a great. Oh, and they got him for a false start. No, oh, a penalty marker. Well, we started off fairly clean in this game, and just in the last two minutes, we've had more penalties than we've had in the previous quarter. Yeah, that hat is coming off. There Looks it like is. It's coming off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I see him adjusting his headset over there. <laughs> so does he throw the headset before the hat, or does he just take the headset off? It's, it's a quick grab of the headset, usually to the side, and then that cap comes off, and, and that's, that's when he's really ticked. That's when, he, that's when he's really irritated. You'll, you'll see it. Season's young. Season is young. <laughs> Trips to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Anderson in motion. Takes it. Turns up field. He'll go in. Seven yards. No penalty marker this time. Third touchdown of the drive for Westwood. This time it counts. This, yeah. You got to love the six points when they actually count. And that was the second play in a row where they just ran over the left side of the offensive line. Uh, that, that, that left side really getting a great push on, on the D-line. And, you know, Debs had it taken away from him, but he's right there to celebrate with Anderson whenever he gets to score. It looks like that backfield is really close with one another. Two-headed monster sure does work nice. That one up and good. And the beautiful thing about that backfield is you've got a senior. And, and Mario Debs, you have to you're, – you're new to, to our crew. Mario Debs has been a guy where he's, he's – been behind a couple of, of other backs in his couple of years and he's always been gracious when he's called upon he's gotten out there and he just goes he just works so hard and it's really cool it speaks to the to the young man to see him here with Anderson Anderson's a sophomore and just what you said there ever so gracious and that's that's the program that Westwood builds and you see it right there and you got to love it because it's you got you got to think that Anderson has to really relish in that he's looking at at the senior who's who was in his position and he can really learn the right way to do things, you know, after Debs leaves. And he's obviously going to become your premier solo back. Whoever he has below him, he could teach, he could teach that, 
that humility and that, that want to and that drive to just come out and, and, and work hard every single day and earn your spot in the backfield. 28 to 14 now with 9.49 to go. So you've had Debs, Martinez, Mazzola, and Anderson in the end zone tonight for Westwood. Talk about spreading the wealth. Here's Elliott to kick it off as he stays perfect on his PATs. And he will kick this one deep, gets a leg into it. It is taken at the 9, 15, the 20, trying to find the near sideline, driven out of bounds there. Nice initial hit from Nathan Potter. I can't say it enough. Just a beautiful kick. Yeah. Great yeah. kick, and, and they decide to kick it deep this time, trusting their cover team. And cover team came up with a big, with, with a big hit there and, and, and a good play to pin them inside uh, their 30, which I think may be the first time they've been inside mm -hmm. their own 30 this, this entire game. Uh, penalty marker on the field way back here on the other side of the field. Thank you, doctor. Well, I do what I can. <laughs> back at the 44. So that is Dr. Sankalas. He's twisting and tweaking the dials tonight. Mike Miller back at the KMAC Vibe Media Studios. So glad Mike is along with us here for week number two. Mike also new to the team. So welcome aboard, Mike. Didn't get to say that last week, but we appreciate all of your hard work. Well, now I have to eat my words after the penalty. They start on the yeah. plus side of yeah. their 30. Yeah, so. the, the 33. Missed it by three. Two receivers split to each side, a little high on the snap, handing it off. Look at the defense. Oh, breaks away from Harris, trying to turn up field. Penalty marker on the run, working towards midfield. The 45, the 40. It'll be Jones driving him out of bounds, out around the 31. Penalty marker way back. It looked like he was dead to rights back there with Damon Harris. As the ball carrier once again was Davis. But that, I would assume that would be a hold. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. It looks it's right there. Personal foul face mask. Oh, against Westwood. Wow. That's a big one. That is a big one. And that's the first time we haven't seen Damon Harris wrap up and, and make the tackle in the backfield. And you know that's going to be eating at him. And the next time he gets back there, he's going to uh, he's going to make sure that he gets that tackle. And really the only problem, the only problem this defense has had is just giving up that big play. Whenever they don't give up the big play, they get the ball back. Yeah, Grayson Davis. 51-yard run by the time they add the 10. First and 10, red zone opportunity here for Austin High with 9.29 to go. Here's Wright looking, and he finds his man, Coke, at the 15. He's dropped. Dropped on contact. Will Clitheroe I was with a say, big shot. I was going to say, guess who? <laughs> guess who? That, that man right there in the middle of the defense, big 4-4. Four -four. Coming in, making a great break on the ball, getting a little help with the, with the high-low tackle. Yeah, shoop in there. Shoop and Clitheroe. That's how I told you. That's how you stopped that big guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's Wright on the zone read. The high snap a little high, but he's driven out of bounds at the 10. They'll spot him at the 11, so he gets three yards. Nice job by Wright. That, that was an extremely high snap. Clock stops 8.54 to go in the half. You got to think, for Austin High, this is four down territory. Down by two touchdowns, and... And from what we understand, not super confident in the kicking game. So mm -hmm. defense really got to uh, stiffen up here and get a couple of stops. Single receiver to the far side, two to the near side, one back in the backfield. Here is right, rolling left, looking, throws. Corner of the end zone, picked off. Incomplete. Out of bounds. What a steal job over on the far sideline, trying to get the number of who that was. Uh, I believe, was that 15? Yeah, that, that, that was Cam Colvin. Oh, well, he's, he made an outstanding break on the ball. He was right there with the, with the receiver all the way and then kind of released the coverage a little bit so the quarterback would make the throw and then breaks inside and comes up with a near pick. From the 10, fourth down and four, here's Austin High. They're trying to draw him off once again. Oh, that, that's just not working for them. Great play, discipline. Play, yeah, and play clock at five. They'll call a timeout here. But yeah, they're trying to draw those big guys across. But this defense, you see that discipline that you're talking about. And, they, and that's the other part of this is we've seen, them, we've seen them burned on a couple of plays, but they bounce right back and a shutdown play right after. Absolutely. And, and that's really the, the only thing that's hurt them so far in this game is a couple of 
big 50, 60 yard plays. They, they, they're, they're keeping everything in front of them. They're bottling up the run. They're getting pressure on the quarterback, like we talked about earlier. But just a couple of times here, they haven't been able to make the, make the right play, or they've been a little bit out of position to where a play goes for 40, 50, 60 yards. But even then, they still are, are able to make a stand and, and, and get the ball back whenever that happens. So you can tell that after they give up a big play like that, they really look in themselves and, they, and, they're, and they're not happy with themselves about it. Right. So they got to come back out and they got to prove a point and say, no, that's, that's not our defense. Our defense is better than that. Here we go. And, and they've shown it every single time. Have to be impressed with this defense here early on in the season. Here's right Now Quintanilla into the ball game. Into the backfield is Davis. Fourth down and four from the 10. Three-step drop, right looking. He's got some time. Throws in and out of the hands of Coke. And he had some room, but it gets away from him. Penalty marker in the backfield. Hoover was on the coverage. I think Hoover might have stopped him short if he'd have pulled that in. I was going to say the exact same thing. It looked like Hoover was going to be there to, 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 to lay a big hit. But one thing you've got to say about Hoover is it was a good – good layoff on the hit because if he would have got there it's a second early yep. you get the pass interference every and you time give them a new set of downs so he made sure that the ball was was touched before he tried to go make a hit drop ball and then in no no unnecessary hit at the end of the at the end of the play there great great awareness by 14. more discipline there by the westwood defense ball goes over on downs 28 to 14 here with 842 to go in the half here comes the offense back out See if they can get some insurance, get some more points on the board. Now Julian DeBerry checks in at wide receiver as well. Yet another sophomore for Anthony Wood and his offense. Two receivers split to each side. Debs is in the backfield. Here's Martinez looking this way. Throws on the turn. Mazzola at the 15 to the 20. Driven out of bounds there. That will be a first down. They spot him at the 21. Just a perfect curl route once again. It's just, it's just, that, it's just that out flat route that they've been running all game. And... I'm so impressed with R.J. Martinez's ability to throw that ball perfectly. It is one of the hardest throws to make. And as a sophomore quarterback, and he's put it on the money every single time. He has. He definitely has. Here's Martinez with the single back there to his left. They go right to left here in the second quarter still. Martinez swings it out. This one complete. Mazzola trying to work that speed at the 20. And he does a heck of a job to get a yard there because he was bottled up quickly by that Austin defense. Back on the coverage for the Maroons, number 15, Matt Rula. Yeah, on that screen pass, that's, uh, that's really just his job is to make that one man miss, but it was a, a good, good breakdown and, and a good wrap up there by the DB, but able to get, able to get a yard out of it and turn, turn a, what looked like a negative into at least a small positive. Deb stays in the backfield, trips to the near side, single receiver to the far side. Second down and nine from their own 22, 7.55 to go in the half. 28 to 14, Westwood leads. Here is Martinez. Three-step drop, looking, throwing the deep ball. Got the coverage beat a little long as he had Mazzola, and Mazzola had a step on the defender. That boy can burn down the field. <laughs> yes, he, he, can. He, he just flew past every defender before they had a chance to, to see what he was doing. Um, great ball down the field, just a tad bit overthrown. Uh, you know Martinez wants that one back because he had him. Yeah, but, he did. Um, I mean, still, still a fantastic look. Yeah, M Mazzola could have run to Bush's chicken and not gotten touched on that one. <laughs> That's true. From the 22, third down and nine. Here's Martinez. Same formation. RJ rolling this way, looking. He's got all kinds of time. This one tries to thread the needle to Hegde, and it falls incomplete at the 30. Again, that was a tough throw. Very tough throw, and it was it was just barely behind Hegde there. It was it was almost a block punt. You you could tell they were smelling a little bit of blood. They wanted to get that one and, and, and get a quick turnaround score, but but way to get that ball off quickly and get get the kick with a little bit of spin on it so it could get a couple extra yards on the bounce. So the momentum right now firmly in the hands of the good guys. We talked about it in the first quarter. If the defense could make a stand and turn that, and they did. So the guys in orange with that now, here comes Austin High back out their first, their best field position in a couple of drives. Here's right back out. They start at their own 47 with 7.29 to go in the first half in a 14 point ball game. Here's right out of the gun. Single back in the backfield. We'll give it to him. He's got a little bit of running room, manages to get a couple of yards as Harris comes from the backside and coming out of the bottom of the pile is Ethan Brown once again. Brown's having a great ball game today. 
this is more of the defensive front we saw last week, and this is what they really need to bring um, for the rest of this half and all of next half is just not allowing them to get any running game going. Yeah, Harris Hawkins, Brown and Flores there on the front. Here's a swing pass complete here to the near side, turning upfield at midfield, but just great swarming by the secondary, swarming probably not a word. Actually, the linebacker, Vicente Ochoa, all the way over to make the play on Callbacher. Ochoa with great pursuit from that linebacker position out to the flat. Looked like there could have been a lot of running room, and, and he closed that he closed that gap with a lot of green in front of him and said, nope, you're going down. Another third down coming up here. Just past the midfield stripe, the Westwood 49. Third down and six. Clock stops, 6.58 to go. Here's Wright out of the gun. Empty backfield. Trips to the far side, two to the near side. Here's Wright out of the shotgun. Takes a snap, looking. Pressure coming. Hawkins in hot pursuit. Throws this one downfield. Wide open and up over the head of Jordan Mitchell out of the backfield. It'll bring up fourth down. And, you know, Eric Hawkins, you watch him working off of that front, you know, one of the front four there. He was just chugging along with a target on right. Yes, he was, and, and, and the DB here had to make the decision whether he wanted to come up and, and pursue the quarterback and leave his man open or stay on the man and let the quarterback run. Made the right decision in the end because he had safety help over the top uh, that allowed some pressure onto the receiver and made, made him drop the ball. These are the downs that have gotten Westwood in trouble tonight. Mitchell in the backfield, fourth down and six from the Warrior 49. Here's right. Flushes, goes the other direction, rolling left, throwing the deep ball way down the far sideline. That one just out of anyone's grasp right there as that was going to be a circus catch by the Austin High receiver on the far side. And just made, just made the wrong read there, uh, did Charles Wright. He had uh, number 20, Devin Quintana, just streaking up the middle of the field on the seam route wide open. And... Uh, it's one of those things that they say once you get to the next level, you got to keep your eyes open the entire field. It looked like Wright was locked into his receiver from the snap and uh, really threw a, threw a decent ball, but really wasn't, a, really wasn't a threat to anybody. And as we've talked about, another sophomore over on the other side, but that's, that's where we've seen the difference in Martinez, where he does check off of the first receiver and looks the other direction. Seen him do it multiple times this year. So it's a battle of the sophomores here, and at this point it's Martinez with the edge. Westwood from their own 49 with 6.42 to go in the half. Here is Anderson bouncing, goes the other direction all the way down to the 43-yard line. And there you see it all right there. Every piece of the pie from Nate Anderson. Everything that we've talked about in the last, uh, what, five and a half quarters of mm -hmm. football with Anderson were summed up in that play, just like you said. He's got, he's got the full package, and you can bring him in behind Debs and – it, it should scare any defense. Now, maybe later on when they start bringing stuff in and they have them both in the back. The 43, here's Martinez. He's going to take it, naked bootleg, all the way. The 35 goes right out of bounds there at the 35-yard line. That's a Westwood first down. You can't say it enough whenever – I mean, that, that was run all the way. He gets the snap and, and puts it high and tight. And when you have a quarterback that can run and there's no spy, and I'm sure in practice he's been, he's been taught to read whether or not he's got a spy on him, uh, and when there's no spy, that's his read on the read option, and he just takes off down the field. And it's a, you know, if, if he gets a seal block here on the outside from his receiver, which he did on that play from Hegde, it's an easy nine, ten yards every single time. Austin High Maroon down. That's Tevin Wooten. That's a guy that they ill not afford to lose. That is one of their returnees. Plays on both sides of the ball as well. And Wooten heading to the sideline, getting the attention there from the medical personnel. Really good to see him walking off in his own strength there. Uh, maybe just a little tweak of an ankle. Um, hopefully it's nothing too bad because he is one of their one of their star guys that they need they need out there week in and week out. So here's where you go right at his replacement. First down and 10 from the 35. Let's see what the offense does. Out of the shotgun, two receivers to each side. Here is Martinez looking, throwing the deep ball here to the near side, beats the coverage. That is in and out of the hands of the wide receiver, Julian DeBerry. Sophomore to sophomore connection. You know Julian wants that one back. Oh, he wants that one back because that <laughs> I, I talked I talked just about the last play, how the throw was a little bit underthrown. He put that one on the numbers and DeBerry turning around, maybe not quite in the right position to, to be able to focus to make that catch and you know, went right through his hands, but what what speed he had there. Oh. He beat two defenders, burned him down the sideline. Yeah, he did. And Martinez puts a puts a pretty ball on him, just can't come up with that, and you know, he's gonna be He's going to be wanting that one back. 
Second down at 10 from the 35. Here's Martinez once again. Throws the underneath bubble screen. Mazzola turns upfield to 35. The 30 drop down from behind. Nice defensive play by Austin High as Teeman Daniel comes in on the stop. Good velocity on the ball on the screen. Uh, the ball was tipped at the line from the from the pressuring defensive line, uh, but still had the uh, the power and the ability to get to get to Missoula. And uh, he is actually coming off the field, shaking up on his ankle down here on the track. So, yeah, yeah, actually he is. So Anderson checks in, checking out of the game. Oliver Yu, who was in. So now you do have 21 and 4 on the field. And a timeout called by Coach Wood. I want to make sure, especially with the personnel change here. Nasal and Sinus Center located at 12309 North Mopac and a location also in Lakeway. If you're in Central Texas, if you've been here for any amount of time, if you've relocated from somewhere else, your allergies, sinus nasal issues, you probably have them. I've been here all of my life, never had that problem until about the last five years. I'm a prime candidate. I need to go to the Nasal and Sinus Center. They're going to just several different methods that they can handle that. I'll tell you, the miracle of the modern medicine, it's unbelievable everything that, that can be done now to take care of that. NSCAustin.com, Nasal and Sinus Center, let them help you breathe easier. And they're proud supporters of Westwood Football. The official website of Westwood Football is warriorsports.org. Got some really cool folks we're going to talk about at the half that have been doing some really cool things for the football team, for the Booster Club. We'll talk about them at the half. And speaking of the half, we'll have our weekly performance of the Westwood Warrior Band and Sundancers, as well as our Whataburger scoreboard. Third and five from the 30. Two receivers to each side. Empty backfield here for R.J. Martinez with 5.02 to go in the first half and a 14-point lead for Westwood. Here's Martinez. He's been slinging it around on this drive. Throws this one underneath. This time it's Ian Cox, the 25, the 20. Lowers the boom at the 15, driven out of bounds at the 13-yard line. You got to like it when you can just throw it to four or five different people. Well, when you get this, when you have this many weapons on the field at once and a quarterback that can just throw it exactly where he wants to and it'll be on the money every time, you're really sitting in a good spot. And a great little crossing screen right there just to get the first down, move the chains. And uh, Ian Cox gave uh, gave the de, the de, de, bleh, excuse me <laughs> easy for you to say the defensive back a little extra there at the end. First and ten from the thirteen. Here is Martinez spins away from a tackle on the zone read. Did break away from the contact there of Boudreau. I love that name Boudreau. Boudreau, and uh, I think uh, that may have been. The incorrect read on that yeah. play uh, looked like Debs had a hole the size of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> yeah, he did. To the end zone. He did. But, I mean, Martinez has been able to keep the ball and make plays happen with it, so you mm -hmm. can see his confidence in himself in those legs. Still very impressed here with the poise of R.J. Martinez. Oh, without and, question. And look at him. He, he's out there. He's just, he just leads us off in. Without question. Trips to the far side, single receiver to the near side. That's DeBerry. Third down and six. In the backfield's Debs. Here's Anderson across. Same play. Turns it upfield. He's got running room all the way down. Wait for the signal. He'll be down at the half-yard line as Anderson. As you've said all night, if it's working, why not do it? I was going to say, I really, I really got to go to Coach Wood this week and just thank him for making me sound yeah, intelligent. You because, sound like a great play caller. Because he's running the same play a couple, two, three times in a row, and it's working every time. Here's Martinez. This is Debs. Powers in. One yard strut, we'll call it. Second touchdown of the night untouched. for the senior Mario Debs. Untouched in the end zone, and those are the kind of ones you like. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to lower your shoulder. You don't have to, to exert too much effort. Your your offensive line does its job, and you just get to stroll on into the end zone and take a couple of helmet taps from the boys. And you know, for the second week in a row, we say Westwood takes control of this game because of the defense. I think that may be a mantra all year. Cactus Jack boots it right through, stays perfect. 3.04 to go here in the half. We'll stay here at Dragon. 35 to 14, Westwood now jumps ahead. And you have to think as we work towards the half, Stephen, you gotta have some pretty happy coaches over on the, on the home team sideline tonight. I can't disagree with that. These coaches gotta be thrilled with the way their team responded to getting 
to getting punched in the mouth at the beginning of the game and your defense comes out, gives up a couple of quick scores, and we think, oh, man, it's going to be a track me, like we've mentioned many, many times tonight. But this defense really answered the bell and said, no, -uh. we're going to be putting an end to that very quickly. So they've been able to come out, come out and get their game plan together and get some pressure on the quarterback and stop the run, really, I think is what the, uh, the key there is, is they're bottling up the run. They gave up that big run play but they were able to come right back and hold them to a turnover on downs. When you stop the run, you force a sophomore quarterback to beat you, and he just hasn't been able uh, – right. Wright hasn't been able to do that this evening. Now, you still got a full half of football to play. You sure. can't get too overconfident, but you got to go in the locker room happy and um, just try and continue doing what you've been doing for the first half of the game. Yeah, these Warriors have controlled most of this ball game. Here is the kick from Elliott. This one will be Coke at the 32, and he's wrangled down there as he gets to the 37. In on the stop. That is Davis making the play for the Special Forces. So a nice play there for Davis as he sees that big man coming at him and just plants himself and drops him. Well, it's got to be just a... A terrifying sight. Oh my god! Out there, <laughs> yeah, I was, big old eighty-seven yeah, with his with his head down coming at you, and you just yeah. you gotta stand strong and get the tackle. And, <laughs> yeah. But but when you do, your team's gonna let you know they appreciate yeah. and, you. And they, they did. didn't have to do it. And they did. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. I'd be like, oh, uh -uh. I can't can't say it here. But first and ten from the thirty-eight. Here's right on the give the zone read bouncing to the outside the forty-five at midfield plows over one warrior. And gets inside the 45 down to the 44-yard line. So on the carry, once again, the workhorse out of the backfield, Grayson Davis. And it seems as though they're getting um, most, of their, most of their long runs there to the outside trying to get to the corner. Um. Here's Davis running to the outside once again. This time he turns up field. Thought they had him back about five yards back, but a nice job to get to the 40 as Eric Hawkins makes a stop. He is very hard to bring down once he once he gets those legs moving. He's got the low center of gravity, can keep those legs churning, and really be and he's really able to, to put his shoulder pads down and, and knock you off of your balance while keeping his. 510-195 is Davis. Quick play action. Pass to the outside. It turns up field at the 30, down to the 26-yard line. And the Austin High offense looking like they did in the first quarter. This time it's Sawyer Berry. Personnel changes. Here comes Brown back into the ball game along with Potter. First and 10 from the Westwood. They spotted at the 26 with 2.13 to go in the half. Westwood leads by 21. On the give, Davis. Pardon me, that was not Davis. That was Mitchell. It was Mitchell into the game. So you do have a nice mix with Davis and Mitchell. A little grounded pound, a little speed. Here's right looking downfield. Slings one to the outside up over the head of Coke. I never, I never thought we would say the ball was too high for him to come down with it's it. It's got to be pretty high. <laughs> but still, I mean, a throw a throw into double coverage. Coke was open, um, but not by much. Josh Shoup checks out of the ball game for Westwood. And the defense once again, fourth down and eight. With still a minute 18 to play. If they get that's this ball back, that's plenty of time for this offense to march down and score again. Took them nine seconds a couple of drives ago. Yeah, we like those. Here's a fourth down play. Out of the gun right, trying to draw him off once again. And that's just not going to work. Going to have to run a play. Here's right up to the line of scrimmage. Ten seconds to go on the play clock. Empty backfield. Here's right. Drops. Looking. Pressure coming. Steps up. Rolls to the right. Looking downfield. Throws across the field out of the backfield. Nice job to get open by the running back, Grayson Davis. That's the play of the game so far for Austin High. Well, you know what they tell you as a quarterback growing up is never throw it across your body unless you can. <laughs> and uh, that was a dangerous throw, but he had the, uh, the ball speed and the arm strength to, to, get it to, his, uh, to get it to his receiver there for first down yardage. Clock is at 56 seconds, and it rolls. First and 10 from the 11 here for Austin High. Right out of the shotgun. Davis in the backfield. Right. Slings it to the far side. That one. Penalty marker on the play. Hoover on the coverage. That's an Austin High touchdown. And I think they're going to get Hoover Koch, for some pass Coke. interference. Yeah, that was Coke once again. Coke has all the touchdowns. Yeah, that's never turned around. 
That's one where Hoover, I mean, just a quick release from right. Hoover didn't have time to turn around. No, he didn't have time to turn around, and, and your safety help over the top uh, was, was showing a little bit of a, a safety blitz here on the outside. Um, just showing it, tried to back out to get that double cover on Coke, but that ball came out of Wright's hands way too quick and just on the money for a great touchdown. Barry will set it down here for Bryant. As Austin High finally back on the board, stretching out for that once again. He's going to get one here before too long. Demetrius Jones from the outside. He made, he made the same attempt last week, and he just loves the full layout dive. But uh, I agree with you. I think yeah, he's, he's just gonna a get, matter of time. He's going to get a couple of them this season because he almost had uh, he almost had one earlier that they called the false start on down here on the other on the other end. Yes, sir. He made a perfect break on the snap and just a tad bit late on that one. But we'll see a couple of those this season. Forty six seconds to go here in the half. Now a thirty five to twenty one lead for Westwood. Yeah, he's getting close. But I'll tell you what, it looks sharp. Man, it looks good. It looks good. He dives out like that. He's got that long hair when he dives. You see that hair flying every which way? Looking like Superman out there. Absolutely. So here's Jing and Anderson. A couple of speedsters back there. They're hanging out around the 16-yard line, getting ready to kick it off. We've seen one onside kick to start the ball game here from Holden O'Kelly. So let's see if Coach Rosie does that again. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. With 46 seconds, you never know, and you got to be careful of it right here. DeBerry over here on the corner for Westwood. There it is. And O'Kelly will kick this one, taken at the 35 and quickly gobbled up. But a nice job holding on to the ball by Joe Kubelka. So nice job. You got you to think, was that, is that really the smartest, smartest play by Austin High there? You give Westwood the ball at the 40, 39, 40 yard line. You've seen him score at will so far in this first half very quickly. 40 yeah, seconds, I mean. That's, that's a lot of time. That's, that's a lot of time. How, I mean, with. Two timeouts. Oh, two, yeah. No, no timeouts. Oh, no timeouts. We've already called them all. Okay. Well, still, 40 seconds. You can make that. Anderson can break it. Debs can yeah. break it. Martinez can break it. Yeah, RJ has come very close uh, on those long balls right down the middle of the field. He's been really close, especially on that last drive. And they're going to try it, probably on first down. <laughs> they, they're going to they're gonna try, and you got to think that they want to get another touchdown on, four, on the board before half. And this will be a delay, West. Delay no, of game. Oh, delay of game. Delay okay. of game penalty. So back it up five yards. Just trying to pad the stats here. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Give them five yards extra. Set it down at the 34. Still 40 seconds. DeBerry's in the game. He's going to shift over to the far side. There's Nate Anderson. They're going to put Anderson in the slot. Hegde will shift out to the far side with DeBerry. Jing here to the near side. Empty backfield. So here's Martinez. Three-step drop. Looking downfield. Flushed out of the pocket. Still looking. Unloads. Complete at the 41 to Hegde. Does a nice job to get out of bounds. Good heads-up play by Hegde right there. Could have easily just fallen down. Try to get back to the line of scrimmage, but smart enough to get out of bounds and stop that clock. You in the game as well. He lines up here to the near side. Now Hegde shifts over here to the near side. Anderson out as well. So three to the near side. Ying over to the far side with DeBerry. Martinez. Line of scrimmage is the 41. Second down and eight. 32.3 seconds remaining. Martinez drops, throwing the deep ball to the far side. Ahead of the coverage. This is picked off at the 23-yard line. Ball slightly underthrown and able to make the grab. Austin High, penalty marker after the play. Looked like getting under that one was Deion Thompson. Yeah, and this isn't the, this isn't the NFL, boys. He went down and they marked him down. and uh, Can't get up. No, and it was Julian DeBerry who, uh, who kind of chased after him after he got up and was running back to his sideline and tackled him. I think that's who they might get for this, uh, for this penalty. Yeah, he didn't just set him down either. No, Kinda he did not. <laughs> a little uh, championship wrestling, as we like to say right there. A little bit of a Vader bomb. Oh, Lord. <laughs> there, was the, there was the shot we were talking about, though, that they were going to take. And it was there, just slightly underthrown. And I'm more, more impressed with the, with the ability of the defender to come down with the ball. He was 
up in the air, turned around, had to make a great play, and that's um, one of the first miscues we see on the, on the day here. Yeah, Thompson with a great interception. So 24 seconds to go, so hopefully your defense can prevent any more points. A couple of timeouts in the back pocket of Mike Rosenthal. First down from the 39. Here's Wright. Three-step drop. Pressure coming. Brown from the outside. Wright hit as he releases that one in and out of the hands over on the far side. Nice coverage back there. And once again, I'll tell you, that's another guy having a great game is Demetrius Jones. They have been throwing the ball at him all night, and he is essentially I, – I would like to see the stats on whether or not he's actually given up a completion yet I because – I haven't seen him complete a ball on him yet. Why do you keep throwing at him when he's locked? Look at him. He's, yeah. he's clapping. He's excited. He's feeling himself <laughs> right now. And Brown laid a lick on right when he let that ball go. Second down and 10. Brown, once again, <laughs> the pressure, that one complete at the 48 over on the far side. Make it the 49-yard line. Nice job for Austin High. And that's Barry. Over on the Westwood side of the field, 12 seconds to go. Clock stops as they move the chains. First down and 10 from the Westwood, 49, 35 to 21. And Austin High will burn a timeout. Really don't want to give away points mm. here after yeah. that interception. Um, you got you to gotta think that they're going again four down territory. They haven't really trusted the kicker. They've gone for it on, on most of the fourth down. So if you can keep them outside, the, outside your 40-yard line, you should be pretty good. Just got to hold for, for 12 seconds here. But – you know, keep keep getting pressure on that quarterback. This is really the first series that we've seen it constantly in, in multiple back-to-back-to-back -back -back plays where the quarterback is getting flushed. I know that they're sending five wide, and you, and you have to sit back and let those plays develop, but we're getting to the quarterback in two, three seconds very quickly, and that's one of those things that you've got to, you've got to keep doing that if you want to hold on for this last 12 seconds. So it'll be a first and ten. Just past the midfield stripe here for Austin High. One timeout remaining. They trail by 14 here to Westwood. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Right, looking, plants, looking this direction. Throws that one complete inside the 40 down to the 37-yard line. The coverage was there, but once again, it's Coke. That guy's done the damage. Clock stops with five seconds remaining. As back on the coverage was Hoover. Oh, and they're going to on another 15 for a face mask. That's not what you want right there. Man, I'll tell you, you, you start having mental mistakes like that. And, of course, a lot of it may be the hurry-up offense that we're seeing here from Austin High. But this is a pretty good test here for the Westwood defense as they start to march this one off. And five seconds remaining. We're watching Austin High going down the field right here, but a lot of it Westwood's given to them the easy way. You got to think this is probably going to be the last play of the game. They're going to take a shot. You want to sit back and prevent defense and just, make sure that nothing gets behind you. you got to keep your eye on big old 87 here. Just outside the red zone from the 21. Here's right as the clock expires. Flushed out of the pocket. Pressure coming. You got a warrior hurt. Throws this one into the end zone. That one almost hits the Sundancers back over on the other side, and that will be the end of the half. Look like Harris. May have cramped up a little bit. He's walking a little gingerly off, but I think he's going to be okay. Nice way to end the half for the Westwood defense. A little sketchy right there at the end of the half, but the defense finishes off Austin High. One half complete here from Dr. R.L. Peters Jr. Field in Round Rock, and your halftime score, Westwood 35, Austin High 21. We'll come back. We'll have our weekly performance by the Westwood Warrior Band. The Sun Dancers, we're going to talk about some booster club business, and we'll take a trip to the Whataburger scoreboard. Westwood football continues on the KMAX Sports Broadcast Network and the Vibe Media Network. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine Inner Space Caverns, if it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it! Ow! Oh, that hurt bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. Halftime from Dragon Stadium at Round Rock High School. Home game for Westwood. We've talked about how weird that is, but it is what it is. A lot of teams in Round Rock ISD. 35 
to 21 our score before we recap the first half always want to remind you if you're interested in being a business sponsor for the westwood warrior football program warriorsports.org jump on there click the contact information you get a hold of the booster club president and they will get something put together for you very affordable plans several different levels you can find all of that information there great way to get great exposure to your business right here in the northwest northwest austin round rock area boosters would like to thank the 81 families that have joined the booster club so far this year you can still join jump on there there are special quarterback perks for the uh, $500 and above level. And get this, that includes a breakfast with head coach Anthony Wood for four home games. That's a pretty good deal right there. Get to talk to the coach, talk some X's and O's. Contact the Booster Club president, and that is Sarah Solomon at warriorsports.org. Next week, it will be senior week. All the senior football players, trainers, filmers, cheerleaders, everybody will be recognized. That will start at 6.20 next week and that is over at the palace on palmer lane like to thank a couple of special volunteers our special volunteer highlight this week goes to tracy Palumbi. she delivers 60 loaves of bread and peanut butter each week to make sure that the football players get the nutrition after their morning practices that program is funded by the westwood warrior booster club so thank you tracy that's uh, ever important got to take care of these guys they get out here and they're working hard and it's programs like that also want to highlight special volunteer highlight goes to Allison uh, Pasternak as well as Lori Ryan they chaired the annual luau fundraiser which raised a bunch of money and it does every year doing really good things for the booster club so thank you Allison and Lori for your work as well warriorsports.org the official website of the Westwood Warrior Football Booster Club and warrior sports so pretty interesting first half Stephen. You, you, as you said maybe a little little bit of panic maybe after the onside kick but everybody responds just the way they should everybody responded and and the the, the only thing that i would i would say is a, was a little concerning in this half because when you get inside after the first two possessions everything was smooth and then you get the last two possessions and those those first two and those last two are the only only time in the game where you think well there's maybe maybe some little shakiness going on here um but you got to be happy with what you see obviously up by 14 would really prefer to be up by that 21 that you mm -hmm. were before you give up that that touchdown there near the end but love what you see from the running game it it looks like it's it's here to stay the the hamburgers up front are just getting a great push and they're protecting they're protecting the, the pocket well for RJ and and we've seen a couple couple of throws here and there where he maybe underthrows it a little bit but everything else has just been pure and perfect and and his his running his running looks looks very good picked up right where he left off last week which if you're any of the coaches on this on this team you just got to be ecstatic about especially when you got when you understand that he is only a sophomore. We'll, sure. we'll say it. We say it. We'll continue to say it that he's only a sophomore. But he seems to be showing the maturity level of a senior and being able to make the right reads, make the right throws, tuck the ball, throw the ball away. Um, everything, everything so far, except for those little tiny things that I mentioned. Yeah. You gotta love what you saw in the first half. It, and so much of what you say, you know, we can sing the praises of Anderson and and Martinez and and Debs and all of these guys and at the guys out on the edge, but. You win these games up front, and, and once again, we're just seeing the – you mentioned the hamburgers. Those guys are just dominating. And, and over on the on the defensive side, once again, that, that front seven, if you want to call it the front seven, they, they're just not giving Austin anything. And Austin has some really special athletes themselves at those skill positions, and it's just locked down once again. It's, uh, it, it absolutely is. And, and if they've, they've got a couple of, couple of big plays that, that really flip the field for the Warriors. But, man, I tell you what – that that front seven is is here to play every single night, and um, it's just a matter of time tonight before they start getting sacks like they did last week. Um, we we talked about it as as the Warriors are walking off the field. Harris really wanted that yeah. sack there on the last yeah. play, and, and and he looks fired up and ready to come out and, and and get a couple of sacks here to really set the tone for the defense in the second half. But you've got to be you got to be proud uh, of the way they played so far, really pressuring the quarterback and the secondary man. 
um, with especially with big 87 Ben Coke yeah. out there running yeah. around um, bigger than anyone that you've got out on the field at, at any given time. Um, we've, you've, you've really had um, Zach Hoover. Man, I tell you what, he is he has come to play Pretty against Ben Coke. There, it's, it's, he is feisty. He is completely undersized comparing him to, to Ben Coke, but he's not letting him get anything easily. Um, he's one of those players where where he's gonna you know Ben Coke's gonna get his receptions. He's got all he's, three he's touchdowns. He's got all the tonight, touchdowns, indeed. but they haven't come easy for him. He's had to fight. He's had to claw, and that's all because of uh, Hoover there and the rest of the secondary, who's really really come out here and, and said, you know, we praised the the front seven all week last week, mm-hmm. but um, the secondary is letting us know that they're here to play as well. Yeah, a, a three yard, a sixteen yard, eleven yard touchdown passes there. To Coke, he does. He he's, accounts for all the 21 points, and you've got two touchdowns for Mario Debs. You, you had a 10-yard run by R.J. Martinez, 37-yard pass to Mazzola, and then uh, the pa- or the run there by Nate Anderson. So 35-21 to 21 the score. And, again, a, a very nice luxury if you're Anthony Wood and your staff that you have several players on the, on the field there that you can share the ball with. And you've got multiple people scoring touchdowns, and that's something that, that – Again, a good problem to have if you're Westwood. Fantastic problem to have. And it's one of those things where you're scoring a lot of points, but the defense knows that anyone that you've got lined up there at any given play can score. And so they really have to be fundamentally sound and they have to keep their eye on every single player as opposed to if you just have one, you know, star player right. out there that's, that's your go to every single time. You know, you can just double cover or throw a spy there in the middle of the field. But when you got four, five, six players, um, you know, and you're having – some of them aren't even on the field because you got so many of them. you got yeah. some on the sideline that you can switch in and out, get fresh legs out there. That makes it really tough for a, for an opposing defense to try and, and yeah. stop you, and we're you, seeing that here. You gas the defense, and we talked about it. There's at least a couple of guys on the Austin defense. They go both ways. And so, yes, when you can, when you can supplement with fresh legs, that definitely makes a difference. Uh, quickly to the Whataburger scoreboard, take a look around Central Texas. Uh, scores of interest, Westlake leads Cy Ranch. Nice early season matchup there, 14-3. A&M consolidated over Bryan, 14-0. Uh, halftime score, Coppers Cove over Maynard, that's 7-0. Heading to the fourth quarter, Vandegrift continues to roll. They lead Ellison, 28-6. A 6 or 13-6A... Uh, opponent here of Westwood later down the road, trailing Leander does to Pflugerville in the fourth quarter. That's 30-14. to 14. Really good game in Texas tonight. Liberty Hill leads Hutto 34-31. to 31. Hutto, big power out of 6A. A lot of people have them going very, very deep. There's Liberty Hill. That's a perennial power. You got a good one going on there, 35-34 to 34 in the – or 34-31 to 31 in the third quarter. Other scores, Conley, they lead Del Valley 21-13 at the half. Uh, out of San Antonio, Churchill leads Veterans Memorial. That is 14-8. Uh, another Hayes County battle right here. Hayes, they beat San Marcos last week. At the half, they lead Dripping Springs 21-14. Big ball game right there. At the half, Gonzalez all over Crockett. That is a 35 to nothing score. McCallum and Lehman, those two teams tied up at 13. Nice job for Lehman staying there with McCallum. Here we go, Dr. Sang. Lockhart on the road taking on Taylor oh. in the third quarter there. The old Lions looking to go 2-0. Restore and oh. the roar. Restore the roar. 22-7 is the score there as Lockhart leads Taylor. Georgetown leads Waco High 3-0 at the half. Boy, Travis Travis just in a tough spot right now. They trail University 37-0 at the half. Really good game out of San Antonio. A halftime score, the Reagan Rattlers lead Cibolo Steele. That's 14 or 17 to 14 the score there. New Braunfels over Seguin at the half. That is 16 to 9. Continue to look through here at the half. Kerrville Tyvee over Fredericksburg, 36 to 21. Luling trails Lano, 28 to 6. Here's your score. You're not gonna like oh, this I one. Oh, I just looked at it. Oh wow. Yeah, you're not you're not gonna like this one. This is a huge early season matchup here. You've got you've got Wimberley again, perennial power. And the uh, hometown here, my main man over here to my right, they're in trouble right now. As you got Giddings in there, 
It's 45 to 13 at the half. At the half. Well, you know, you just got to hope for a, a, a big second half from the boys there. But adjustments. You just got to make those uh, locker room adjustments. You'd think that one's going to be a tough one to come back from. But Scrap the game plan. Come up with a new one real quick. Hey, Texas high school football, you, you never say never. You yeah, never say that's, never. That's, that's also true. Also at the half, Rockdale over Caldwell. That one is 35 to 10. Let's scroll through here and we'll see if anything else that we should pass on. I think uh, we're probably good from that. But, oh, actually, yeah, here we go. Cedar Ridge leads Cedar Park 14-7. to One of those powers will be 0-2 by the time we're done tonight. And that's something nobody thought oh, was going to be yeah. uh, be a reality at this point in the season. No way. A couple of 13-6A scores at the half. Belton 28, Round Rock 17. Stony Point 38, Harker Heights 16. Good game going on over in Austin. Rouse and Anderson. Rouse leads 14 to 13 at the half. Eastview over Canyon, 22 to 21. And lastly, uh, we'll call that the last one. Everything else kind of on the outskirts around here. And that'll do it for our Whataburger scoreboard, of course, presented by Whataburger. That's always good stuff. Goes hand in hand with Texas high school football. Texas Burger Place, been around since 1950, originates in Corpus Christi. If you're ever in Corpus, Corpus Christi, go eat at the Whataburger by the Sea. That's a really cool place. Of course, if you're a Westwood family, your favorite location is 13201 Ranch Road, 620, right there at 620 and Lake Creek. And again, a big thanks to all of our Warrior Football sponsors, ATX Football, that's the Austin Youth Football League, Fabulous Affairs Catering, Flicks Brew House, Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin, Torchy's Tacos, that's 620 location right there at Anderson Mill and 620 in, as well. And, of course, our friend Jenny Ray. She has been the photographer for Westwood football for many, many years. Sports, family, senior pictures, all is what Jenny will take care of. She specializes in Austin sports photography. You can find her online, photography by JennyRay.Zinfolio.com. Again, WarriorSports.org, the official website of Westwood football. So, I don't know, gentlemen. Keys to the second half here for Westwood. I guess keep on keeping on pretty much at this point. That's what you want to see. Stick stick to your game plan. You know, it, it worked in the first half. Um, your defense tightened up a few things here and there, but overall you got to like what you saw. And uh, from the offensive standpoint, I think you just keep running the ball, really. Just keep, keep pounding the rock. It runs the clock. And um, it's working. It's that, that's sure. that's the main thing is it's working. You're getting five, six, seven yards essentially every down. And you know whenever you're doing that, one of them's gonna well, it's gonna break open eventually. It's one of those things where it's gonna happen eventually. It's a matter of of uh, when, not if. And and it also opens up your 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 passing game whenever they're having to throw seven, eight men in the box to try and stop your, your running backs up the middle or to the outside, it opens up one-on-one -on -one coverage. And we've seen all night tonight, we, we have the receivers to beat one-on-one -on -one coverage down the field. Right. A um, couple of balls right on the money just, just dropped and a couple of them a little underthrown. And if those connect, it's one of those things where if we connect on three of those four, you're looking at a 42, 40, yeah. you know, 49 points on the board at, at halftime. And this game's way, you know, way out of control. So one of those things that you take what you got at a 14 point lead you you love to see the lead but come out here with the aggressiveness and and the drive and the want to that you did in the first half and, and realize that you got two more two more quarters to play to uh finish off this game and and, and try and move to two and oh yeah and play, as you say plenty of football to go here in the second half but just looking forward slightly you, you come out of this, as we said, your final test in district, and of course it's a 25-6A foe out of that gauntlet of 25-6A with, with Lake Travis and, and Westlake and all of that, uh, usual suspects right there. But for Westwood, you start district next week and you take on Hendrickson. So this is a great test for Austin High, but next week that candle wick gets just a little bit hotter because you got Hendrickson coming in and they're on a bye. So... We'll talk about that here as we get towards the end of the ball game in our post game. And again, in our post game, we will go back to that Whataburger scoreboard and recap this, and we will discuss Hendrickson. That's been a foe that Westwood's had a little bit of trouble with, but that'll be quite the test. But as we said, still a half of football to go. We're going to get ready to go down to the field here at Dragon Stadium. It's one of our favorite times of the week. 
It is our weekly performance from the Westwood Warrior Band <laughs> and the Sun Dancers coming at you. Enjoy the show, folks. Westwood Warrior Band continues this halftime performance with their spirit show. This year's spirit show fe features the song Uprising by Muse.
motion. So there you go, the Westwood Warrior Band once again. Brilliant performance here at Dragon Stadium. Really nice job. Just good, good music. And you mentioned there, that's a lot of folks in that band. Show band. It's a good, good band. Great, great accompaniment. And and you can tell that um, sometimes people consider halftime a time to go to you know to go get some snacks, some sodas, refreshments, but not here. Everyone stayed put. Mm -hmm. They love watching their band and they support it. Here come the Warriors. Quickly ask you both guys, we've got a big weekend coming up. Usually here, it's UT and A&M what people will, will talk about. UT looking to bounce back. The, they should handle their business. <laughs> you, you would hope. <laughs> um, but man, Aggieland. Clemson coming to town. College game day, that's going to be quite the scene over there tomorrow. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough place to play, but that, that Clemson 
front four, people are talking about it being the best ever to do it in college football. They yep. get after the quarterback and they stop the run. But playing at Kyle Field is is something else in it, you know, entirely. It's a, it's it's a very difficult environment to play in. You know, those those fans get midnight yell, they get oh, rowdy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um they're going to be excited for the prime time, the lights, the cameras, yeah. everything. So it's one of those where you kind of kind of think Clemson with the, you know, I think they're they're giving Clemson 12 and a half. Mm-hmm. Um but that's one of those things. Any given any given Saturday, I know that's not the correct yeah, well, saying, but and it's and you know Jim Jimbo Fisher's got those folks believing over there in Aggieland, and that's that's a big part of it. Everything that I've heard from down there, I know some folks on the inside over there, and he he's got them coached up and ready to go. So don't they have a couple players out from uh, I believe so. Ed Hutton, yeah, on a lesser known team, yeah, they didn't need to be doing that, and they're suspended right. for the real game, yeah. And and that's I, I really I truly believe this game tomorrow will be a third quarter. It'll be not that it'll be in doubt, but I think it'll be close. I don't think it A and M lays an egg, but you know, A and M stunned Alabama a few years ago when Johnny Football. <laughs> yeah, so you never know. You got to play the game. That's why you play the game. And then bringing it bringing it back to uh, local uh, DKR tomorrow needs to be. Jam-packed yes. and popping because this Texas team has got to get back on track. Um, yep. I think I think just really underestimated um, what that Maryland team could do last week. Just didn't really come in fiery. But this is a team, a Tulsa team that they should handle very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tulsa loves to run the ball. Uh, ran it something like 66 times last week for 300-plus yards or something crazy like that. Stop the run, make the quarterback beat you with his arm, and yeah, the Tulsa defense is, you know, not one of the best. You know, right, don't, right. Don't, don't want to say it's flat out bad, but I don't know. You know, I'd like to see Coach Herman get a running back in there and and just go with him, go feed him, feed him, feed him. Feed don't him. pull him out. And let and and, and in, in a game like this, you really want to see Ellinger, yeah, make smart decisions and the correct decisions. You know, in the in the big er moments of this game because there's not going to – if it goes yeah. all according to plan, there shouldn't be any tense, tight moments of the game. Should but be some good work for Shane Bouchel tomorrow. You, hopefully. That's, see, that, that's what you want to see. You want to see Bouchel get in there and get some. But here we go. Yep, absolutely. Back here, maybe even Gerard Hurt. Here, here we go. Back here, Westwood will kick it off. They'll kick it off left to right. It is a 35-21 to 21 ball game as we come out of the half. That one to Coke, and he falls on top of that one. A little wobbler down around the 34. Little sneaky play call there, you know. If you get, if you kick it right there, there's nobody there. Coke has to come up and get the ball. If it squirts out, your your players are there for a chance to recover. And if Coke goes ahead and recovers it like he does, they still are, you know, at the 34 yard line. Your defense has got a chance to stand tall here. I like I like the uh, conservative onside sure. kick. I guess you could say. Indeed. Here's right back out. Two receivers to each side, one back in the backfield. They go right to left. On the give, out of the backfield. Quickly bottled up. This time it's Eric Hawkins. Says, no, sir. Four-yard loss on first down. And that's something that we really didn't get to see too much of in the first half was making sure if you're the first guy there to, to, to bring down the, the ball carrier because if he if he breaks that tackle, he makes a couple more miss, and we saw it in the first half. He yep. can run. That's Grayson Davis. Empty backfield now for Wright here on second down and 13. Just underway in the second half. Wright slings it to the far side, almost batted away. Pick six, almost in the hands of Nathan Potter. And just a great play on the ball. If he's half a step faster, he's pick six to the house. But mm -hmm. still, you love, you love to see the athleticism right there, the heads-up move. And, uh, you know, he's, he likes that he made the play, but you could tell right there that he wanted that pick. Line of scrimmage still the 31, third down and 13 here for Austin High. Single back in the backfield, two receivers split to each side. Here's right, three-step drop, pressure coming, flushed out, rolled. He'll be brought down from behind by Ethan Brown, ball on the carpet, incomplete pass. Ethan Brown gets his here in the third quarter. Absolutely phenomenal play there on the outside just to get around the O-lineman and, and, and really lay out there as uh, Wright's trying to scramble out, lay out and get the shoestring tackle. This is where they've gone to Coke. Fourth down and 13. Line of scrimmage, still the 31. Looking over to the sideline, here's Wright. Single receiver to each side, a back in the backfield. 
right with the play clock at 17. Takes a snap and he'll quick punt it away. Westwood, not with anyone back, takes a nice, or actually just kind of stuck and rolls along to about the 26 and a half yard line. But that's that's prime real estate right there for this Westwood offense. Oh, and if you're if you're the defense there, you love that opening opening possession. Give up, uh, take away three yards actually. Yeah. Um, and then the punt there. It sticks for you right there. You know, yeah, it could it could have easily taken a roll and pinned you inside your own 15, but it sticks there. You're on the 26 yard line, and this offense looking to pick up right where it left off in the first half. And and we discussed it. You know, I think it's it's a heavy it's a heavy dose of Anderson and Debs here in, in the second half. Indeed, hungry defense right there for Westwood. First and ten. Here's Martinez. Going left to right, motion man across. That is Anderson. He'll take the ball or the little, uh, what, what we call that, the jet sweep. Down to about the 28, the hot potato. Good old hot potato play. We used to live and die with a hot potato. That was the 0 and 10 year when that was all we had. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was. He's, he's, he's looking for, for that jet sweep. He's looking for one of those. Every time he's run it, the hole's been cut back to the inside, and he's been able to make something happen. But he's waiting for that one time where he can get that corner and then really flip that gear that we've seen before down the sideline. Because once he does, he gone. Here's Debs. Big hole right there. He's got running room. The 40, the 45 midfield brought down from behind at the 45-yard line of Austin High. And there's the burst. Two-headed monster. And you just never know which one you're going to get. Oh, here we go. We're moving quick. Absolutely. Here's Debs coming off the field. Fresh legs of Anderson stands to the left of Martinez. Austin High not even set yet. They're all discombobulated over there. They do set. Martinez out of the gun, trips to the far side. Here's Anderson, same play, bouncing off a left guard down to the 40. He'll be stopped at the 41, gain of four yards on first down. Bring up second down at six. But just like we said, you know, feed him the ball, hold on to the ball, run that clock, you're up two scores. You get an opening stop, march down the field, Take command of this game. Hegde to the far side. Jing and Mazzola. Good to see Mazzola out on the field. Saw him a little gimpy earlier. He's Absolutely. out. Anderson in the backfield. Here's Martinez. Gives it to Anderson. And he goes and still goes all the way down to the 35. Just, Six yards for a first down. Just we, we could say it, and we probably sound like a broken record at this point, but he just keeps churning those legs. Keeps moving, him and him and Debs both. They're hard to bring down, and they're going to get every inch, every yard that they can, and moves the chains there. And those hamburgers just keep working up front. First and ten, 9:27, clock rolling into third. 35 to 21, Westwood leads here over Austin High. Oh, ball on the carpet. Martinez just falls on top of that one. Eh, just a one of the few mistakes we've seen on the front line, and just a just bad snap. Heads up play to fall on it. Doesn't try to pick it up and make something happen. You know, you've been getting big chunk plays. You take you take a small loss because you're confident in your ability to get it back right here. Smart heads up move by a, by a young quarterback to fall on the ball and not try and pick it up and make something happen. Second down and 13 with that slight loss. Ian Cox in the ball game. He will line up in the slot to the left. Anderson in the backfield. He's to the right of Martinez. Here's RJ. Deep drop, looking, flushed out of the pocket, flings this one to Anderson, the 35, the 30, got running room at the 25, driven out of bounds at about the, we'll wait for the spot. I thought he was out of bounds two different times. Inside the 20, red zone opportunity as they will spot him at the 17-yard line. And that's that thing. You, Anderson, Anderson sees the hash marks, and he likes to just flick it on, and that's exactly what he did. And um, Got, you know, should have been tackled down uh, about the 25, but gets an extra seven, eight yards out of the run. It's a Westwood first down inside that red zone. 8.35 to go in the third. After a three and out from the defense, here's the offense trucking right on down the field. And Martinez out of the gun, takes a snap, hands it off. Here's Debs as he continues to barrel, spins inside the 15, down to the 13. Never quit. Nice spin move there. And just loves to loves to lower his shoulder, get his center of gravity low. It, it's, it's so hard to take down when you got such a sturdy base like that. Mm -hmm. You can just pinball off players, and um, use, uses that right there to get a get a couple extra yards and really stay ahead of the stay ahead of the downs. Gain of four, second down and six as we work towards the eight minute mark remaining here in the third. 
Nice sustained drive here from the Westwood offense. Martinez hands to Debs. They're just going to run it right up the middle. He's still going all the way into the end zone. That's a Westwood touchdown, 13 yards. Touchdown number three for Mario Debs tonight. And what a game he's having, and you know that he's just got to be so excited. We talked, to, we talked about it earlier, and look, what did we say? The first one to get up there to give him a chest bump, that's Nate Anderson right that's there. Awesome. Those two guys in the backfield really, really appreciate one another and, and really like to see each other succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Cactus Jack for the extra point. That one up and good. He stays perfect. Another unsung hero right there, Cactus Jack Elliott as he takes care of another extra point. 7.52 to go here in the third quarter. Westwood on the board once again. We'll take a break and come back to score. Westwood 42, Austin High 21. Westwood football continues in just a moment. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on kmaxsports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. Dragon Stadium indeed, 42 to 21. Westwood leads over Austin High here in game number two of the season. And Westwood has been in command most of this one. You say most because it started off a little shaky, <laughs> but. There's that short kick. This one in the direction and fair catch call for and made there. That's the smart play. That's what I would do. That's the heads up play right there by 21 for Austin High. Uh, call on the fair catch. You don't want it to. Uh, you don't want to give yourself a chance to just get smacked if you catch it. Yeah. Hamilton, Jaden Hamilton with a nice play there. And Austin High will come out. They'll scrimmage from their own 41 to start their second drive. Three and out to start the second half. And here they come out desperately needing something to happen here before this one gets any further out of hand. Now 30 to 20, Pflugerville and Leander. They're in a delay. Saw a little bit of lightning at the half. Hope it doesn't head this direction. It's behind us. Here is Wright. That one complete. Nice pass to thread the needle there. As hauled in by Jaden Hamilton. Or pardon me, that was actually Quintanilla. Nine-yard gain. Little help from the, from the stripes there on the tackle, too. Mm -hmm. And they'll just, the old rugby move there all the way inside the pass the midfield stripe down to the 49. First down for Austin High. Vandy leads 28 to 12 in the fourth quarter over Colleen Ellison. 7.25 to go here in the third, 42 to 21. First down Austin High from the Westwood 49. On the run, running right, turning upfield at the 45 and met there by a host of Warriors, but still going, getting a little help and pushed for a first down. 11 yard gain on first down all the way down to the 38. I thought he was tackled all the way back there at the Me 45. Too. And he just kept churning his legs and just would not go down. You really gotta you gotta get a get down at his at his knees or his ankles and tackle him back there when you had him first touch. Harris hit him first, but a nice surge, 706 to go in the third. Two receivers to the far side, two receivers to the near side, single back in the backfield. That is Davis. Going right to left here in the third. Austin High moving the ball here on their second drive. Swings this one out. Coke at the 40 turns upfield, and he will be stopped at the 35 for a three-yard gain, and that will bring up second down and seven. And that's just one of those plays where if you're the first man to get to Coke, you got to bring him down, but that's way easier said than done. He just kind of sheds that tackler like it was his day job and moves on and gets an extra couple yards. Line of scrimmage is a 35, second down and seven. Here's right out of the gun once again. Empty set to the far side, three to the near side. And Davis stands in the backfield. Play action fake, slings it, complete at the 29, turning upfield at the 25. It's a receiver once again. It's been a quiet night for Sawyer Berry, but he makes a big play there down to the 22. Yeah, really smart move by Berry there. Just kind of sits down in the, in the hole in the zone and then makes a couple people miss. Um, 
but good open field tackling from the from the DBs and the linebackers there and to, and to push him back to the middle of the field. Ochoa finishes him off. Here's Wright's pass complete. Barry once again at the 25, turns up field, hit at the 17, and goes out of bounds there. Host of Warriors there, led by Zach Hoover. Hoover's all over the field. He really is. He's, he's kind of just been an unsung leader, I feel like, on this defense tonight. He's drawn the... The short stick, I guess it is, with having to <laughs> guard Coke, and he's really come out here and shown that he's not giving up. Second down and five from the 17. Swing pass over to the outside. That one way over the head of Coke, but there's a penalty marker there. There was a little chicken fighting going on on the far sideline. Yeah, I think they're going to get – there's a couple different penalties there. I think they're going to get uh, Westwood on the offsides, offside uh, call here to start the play, and that's why they just kind of took the, took the chance down the field with the free play there. But we shall see with the yeah. official call here. Wait on the call. Coach Rosenthal over on the far side. Like, there's the offside. It's declined, and they're going to get him for a pass interference as well. We've said Austin High back in the playoffs last year as well by district. Loser to, I believe it was uh, Cibolo Steel. Oh, no, no, it was not Cibolo Steel. I will remember who that was. Haven't won a playoff game since 1957, Austin High. First down and 10 from the 17. Red zone opportunity here for the Maroons. Three-step drop, looking, pressure coming, and dropped is right. This time, bottom of the pile, who else? Big old number eight. Damon Harris. And that may be the sack that opens up the floodgates. They needed one, and now it's their first one of the night. And I think that uh, Damon Harris was hungry going to the locker room like we talked about. And he wanted that one, and he got it. And I bet you he is hungry for some more of those. Absolutely. It was Bernie Champion. Pardon me. I get all those Cibolos and Bernies all mixed up over there. 522 as the clock rolls. Big loss. Second down and 18. Motion man across, they'll run the jet sweep, trying to run right and turn up field, but there is nowhere to turn up field. As that whole Westwood defense straight, scrapes all the way across, and it's Vicente Ochoa from the linebacker position. Absolutely nothing doing on that play. Great by the defense to string it out and uh, push him all the way to the sideline and use that sideline as your, as your 12th man right there. Meanwhile, over here on the Westwood sideline, R.J. Martinez over here throwing the ball. <laughs> He's just having fun. Got to keep that arm loose, you know. Got a yard, third down and 17. Here's Wright, plants at the 31, looking downfield, lets it go, complete at the 12, well shy of the first down. As the coverage was there, right, pass, Ochoa, here comes Hawkins back into the ball game. It's going to bring up fourth down. And it'll be fourth and quite a bit, fourth and eight. And they obviously will go here in a 42-21 to 21 contest. Big, so. big play right here for both sides. If, if you're Austin Hine, you get a score or a first down. You kind of hang around, you kind of stay in this game. You can shut the door almost right here if you're Westwood. Absolutely. Here's Wright looking, plants, throws into the end zone. Who else, Coke? Splitting across for his fourth touchdown of the night. This time a 12-yarder. And I think that may be the same play he scored three of those four touchdowns on where he just acts like he's going to block and then releases your typical tight end slip seam towards the post there and uh, wide open. So Austin High hangs around. Extra point coming up here for the Maroons. This will be Jonathan Bryant once again. Good snap, that one is up and good. Four minutes remaining here in the third. 42 to 27. The lead for Westwood. Torchy's Tacos, homegrown taco restaurant from Austin. And now in 17 cities around the United States, people go crazy over Torchy's Tacos. I talk to folks from all over the country. They want to come to Austin, they want to go to Torchy's Tacos. Well, it's a good place to go. And if you're a Westwood faithful, the location you go to is 11521 Ranch Road 620. That's located right there at Anderson Mill and 620 in Northwest Austin. Stop in there for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or all three for crying out loud. Torchy's Tacos right there at Anderson Mill and 620. They support Westwood football. We appreciate it very much. If you'd like to do that, warriorsports.org, the official website of Westwood Athletics. I had some Torchy's for dinner the other night. 
trailer park trashy style with the queso on it. Yes, sir. Really can't beat it. <laughs> really can't beat it. Yeah, I'll tell you. Most of Faith will do all right. Torchies, water burger. Water burger, man. Yeah. You guys are lucky. About all I need. I could eat there all week. Really could. Alternating. Here's a kickoff. This one is kicked deep. Here's Ying from the nine. Turns up field, gets to the 20. He's hit and driven out of bounds at the 24. Nice job by Jing there to kind of just take himself out of bounds. It's Deion Thompson down on the coverage. 3.55 remaining in the third, 42 to 28. The Westwood offense will head back out. Game stays close enough where I think Anthony will keep the starters in. Yeah, that, that, that was one of those, those plays that if you get the stop there and you can you put the starters in and march down and go up by three scores or four scores, it would have been four scores, um, then it's kind of maybe try and get some, uh, some reps in for the backups or the two deep. But right now you got to kind of keep your lead, keep that clock moving, and just push the ball down the field here for a good sustained drive, get your defense some rest. And they go left to right. It's Anderson in the backfield with Martinez. He will take the handoff and just finds running room out to the 30. They'll spot him at the 29. I don't know where he sees these holes. There wasn't one there that time. He still there gets was, five yards. There was absolutely nothing there for him, and I, I think I saw him. He had to hurdle uh, mm -hmm. one of the hamburgers there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've broken record. Uh, yeah. At this point, I might as well just – everyone's probably saying it with us out right. there because they know right. what we're going to say. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Second down and five. Two receivers to each side. Here's Martinez out of the gun. Going to send Anderson across. This is a design keep. Here's Martinez nowhere to go. He's hit immediately. And a great defensive play there by Romeo Brown for Austin. One of the few times we've seen Martinez bottlenecked in this game tonight. Dropping back to the 29. No gain, but no loss. Third and five. Here's Ying back into the game. Hegde and Mazzola over to the far side. Lining up single here to the near side is Julian DeBerry. You know DeBerry's still hungry after that one that he had in the end zone a little earlier. This is one of those plays where you just want to keep moving the chains. Mm -hmm. Jing now here to the near side. Motioning Anderson out to the far side. Martinez looking for the bubble screen. Pressure coming, spins, gets away. Looking downfield, all kinds of trouble. He's just going to toss this one out of bounds. Nice job by Martinez, but that one... Looked like he had to bury here on the near side. And we got a flag here on the play. Um, it was thrown in the direction of 75 there in burnt orange. I don't know what they would call because there wasn't any white jerseys around. And that's Danny Lukowski. Mm. Illegal man downfield. Yeah, came off the block. It did, it did look like they were trying to set up a screen here to the near side to DeBerry. So he probably held his block for three seconds and went downfield to go hit somebody in the mouth. Yeah, they'll decline that one, and that's, that's, a, that's a big stand from Austin High right here. It's just a big big moment in the game where they got to punt it away, and hopefully your defense can get back out there and get the ball back to your O. Here's Devin Quintana. He stands back at the 33. Jing's kick hangs. Nice job, Quintana. Fair catch called for and made in a lot of traffic. Good field position for Austin High. They'll start at their own 45 with 218 to go in the third. 42 to 28 score, so still close. Still close enough to where you're uh, you're not comfortable. You were after that first good possession, that good drive to start uh, the second half. You were comfortable with that 21 point lead, but. Offense kind of stalled right there. Your defense gave up the touchdown last drive, and it's time for them to just stand up and say, no, that's, that's your only one. Mm -hmm. They bring Mitchell and Quintanilla out. Right the quarterback, trips to the far side, and they swing it. Pass to the outside, hauled in, taken at the 40. Turns up field down to the 43-yard line. That's Jordan Mitchell. Nice gain on first down, gain of about three. Second down at seven as we approach a two minute mark remaining here in the third. Austin High resets, gets ready to go. Westwood defense set. And right 
Hands to Mitchell, turning to the outside. He will be driven out of bounds, and the penalty marker comes in at the end of the play. Ridden out of bounds. I don't know if they'll call that a late hit out there. No, Looks like the momentum kind of took him. Maybe a holding call. Yeah, they, yeah, they get called the holding call on uh, on Austin High, and then in unsportsmanlike conduct on Austin High as yep. well. That's uh. There it that's is. 25, that's 25 quick yards. You're backing your team up. <laughs> Damon Harris. I think Damon Harris triggered it. He, he, went oh, and, I'm sure. he went and patted the official. He is a, a spark and a, a fire starter for this defense. He is always out there clapping, getting his, getting his boys hyped up. And um, that's one of those things that you don't hear enough about. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of those that that the players kind of like to keep close to the chest and keep keep their things between them. But you can really see it on Friday nights with Damon Harris out here making sure everyone's hyped up for every single play and also leading them in making plays and saying, look, follow me. It's right. not it's he's it's more it's 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 not a it's not a I'm telling you to do this. It's a follow me. I'm a leader here. We're going to do this together. And that's something that uh it's one, really, really good yeah. to have. One of those coaches on the on the field. Yes, uh, I mean, absolutely. You, you hear you hear coaches talking about that where you you buy in and you become a coach, and that's so. Here's Austin High. You go from third and five to third and twenty five. Here's Wright, planning at the fifteen, looking throws this one right down the field, picked off. Oh, in and out of the hands at midfield. Connor Cooper had that one in the mitts, right in his hands, and he was really lucky that it. It went through at a, at a high speed because the receiver could have could have mm -hmm. come up with it. And there was nobody in front of him, but nope. we'll take the drop in the, in the fourth and twenty-five here. And and you got to think that. Well, you'd think they'd punt it, but they haven't done that hardly all evening. Yeah, so. did that one quick kick. Oh that, yeah, we could see we could see the quick kick from right here. So here's right. Got a key on 87 right here. If they're going to run a play. Clock stops with 1.41 to go. Here's right looking. Brown coming with the pressure. Breaks away. Rolling left. Looking downfield. All kinds of acreage in front of him. Harris going to let him give the chase and runs him out of bounds. Well short of the first down. Spot him at the 37. Great field position for the Westwood offense on the change of possession. Penalty marker on the field. Oh, was that Oh, third? that was third. Okay. Oh, that, I thought... Oh. We okay. had two third downs there. Okay, here's fourth down. Either way, a fantastic play yeah. by, by Harris there. Fourth and 18. And on fourth down, they keep trying this hard count, and it's just not working. Not going to work. So here's right back up to the line of scrimmage. Now shifts out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the near side. One to the far side there is the quick kick, and this one takes a bounce at the 25, and that takes a nice Austin high roll. And it continues to roll and will be down at the six. That was the one they were looking for the first time. Boy, Demetrius Jones over here on the near side, he he got leveled. I, I didn't I didn't see the license plate number of the truck that hit him. Oh no. But he's you can see him. He I think he got up laughing, honestly, because he, he was rolling around and he jumps up and he's like, whoa. <laughs> Look. Still kind of staggering around over there. Looks like me after a long night at the pub there, but he's he's all good. He's all good, ready to go. Back in line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One twenty to go here in the third. And here comes the Westwood offense, 95 yards away from another score. Martinez complete on the far side. This time it's Hegde. Quick seven yards, nice quick hitter. And a great release once again from R.J. Martinez. Just so surprised at, at the accuracy of his ball. It's so nice when it comes out of his hand, and it's right on the money. Second down three. Here's Martinez splitting two here to the near side. He's got all kinds of room there. Oh, that hole close up quickly for Debs. Very quickly. That's one of the few times that we've watched Austin High work the line of scrimmage there. They did on that play. And on the stop, 36, Jackson Woomer. Third down and two. Clock rolling, 37 seconds to go here in the third. Need to get those sticks moving. This is getting a little uncomfortable. I mean, you still have a nice lead, but it'd be nice to keep the drive going here going into the last quarter. Want to keep that clock rolling. 
Here's Martinez. Run all the Design way. run. Gets to the sticks and gets out of bounds at the 17-yard line, and it'll stop the clock right there, and they'll move the sticks. Nice play selection. Got to love that play selection whenever he, he's, he's quick. Mm -hmm. And whenever he makes his decision of, of what angle he's going to take towards the, towards the sideline, because they're not running him up the middle. They're not giving him a chance to get hit. They're running him straight to the sideline, get to the sticks, get that first down, and let's keep, keep this clock rolling. 15 seconds remain. First down, Hegde to the far side, two, or to the far side, two receivers to the near side, rolling this way. R.J. Martinez looking, releases, and coming back to its Mazzola with a nice catch, and he advances out to the 19-yard line for a three-yard gain. Nice job, Mazzola, coming back to the catch. Clock stops, 8.6 seconds to go. Second down coming up, second down and two. Line of scrimmage, the 24-yard line of Westwood. Eight seconds remaining. Here's Martinez in the backfield, Anderson. Two receivers put to each side. Here's RJ looking, quick pump fake, flushed out of the pocket, rolling left, pressure coming from the backside. RJ turns on the Jets, goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. It's too easy. Oh, easy. Ten they, yards. They're not, they're not going to catch him uh, whenever he's got, he's got the, the speed to spin back the opposite direction to avoid the rush. And then he sees, oh, he sees his green in front of him and takes off and again gets to the sidelines, not trying to lower his shoulder. Just get to the sideline, get your first down, get your yards, go into the go into the fourth quarter, first and ten, moving the ball. Absolutely. Three quarters complete here from Dragon Stadium in Round Rock. Home game for your Westwood Warriors. Westwood leads by a score of 42 to 28. One quarter to go. Westwood football continues. In just a moment. Vibe Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, V Y P E, Texas.com and also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think Mopac Improvement Project, except we're always on budget, our price never fluctuates, and we're always on time. I mean, are they ever going to finish this thing right this very second? I'm stuck northbound at 5th Street. Oh! Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. We head to the fourth. Westwood leads Austin High 42-28 to as the Warriors look to stay undefeated in non-district play here in game number two. Has been the Warriors other than that initial onside kick. And they look to add to it right here. Now going right to left in the fourth quarter. Trips to the far side. Single back is Anderson. Three-step drop. Pressure coming. Martinez lets it go. Wide open. That one is hauled in. In and out of the hands of you and picked off. Turning up field at the 30. The 35-40. Big hit right there at the 35. That's going to be a penalty. Rolling up field. Anderson makes the tackle. But the interception there. And a big hit back at the 38-yard line. Crackback block, I'm sure this is what they're going to call there. But, man, what a shot. On the interception was Deion Thompson. And Thompson just pulled, it out of the, just pulled it out of the hands of the receiver downfield. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better ball, couldn't ask for a better route from the receiver, but it was just better defense there. Yeah, Oliver Yu looked like he was going to snare that one in and looked like he was off to the races, but just a great job there. And up, it was you that took the shot as he was coming back to try to make the defensive play on the interception. But a huge hit there. The back. Yeah, there's. There were two plays on, two, two penalties on Austin High there. Uh, one for unsportsmanlike there at the end of the play, which was declined. And then the block in the back because uh, it occurred earlier on in the play further into their own territory. We'll march them back from there. Um, and they'll start inside their own 30. Yeah, yeah right there right at, at the 30. 30. 13 6 8, quick look in. Pflugerville leads Leander. They're still in delay 30 to 20. Cedar Park coming back with Cedar Ridge 28 to 21. That's a third quarter score. Cedar Ridge on top. Round Rock trails Belton 45 to 21 in the fourth. That's your scoreboard. So that was a quick 
turnaround because that looked like seven points very quickly that turns into a turnover. Really, uh, no one's fault on that turnover. Just a, just a great play by the, by the DB there. For sure. Left to right, here's Austin High. Shifting the motion man out, out of the backfield. Screen play to the outside leads him just a little long as he was looking for Davis. And something I said earlier, I said Hendrickson was on by. Actually, Hendrickson off because they were playing Smithson Valley last night at the field. I remembered that after the fact. That game delayed. Don't know if that's been rescheduled or not. That, that's a primetime matchup right there. I'd like to see that one. 11.37 remaining here. Second down and 10. Line of scrimmage to 30. Here's right. Drops back. Pressure coming. Hit as he releases it. And another big shot. And it's Ethan Brown once again. Ethan Brown has lived in the face mask of Charles Wright tonight. It's been a, it's been a great showing from the D-line uh, all game long. You love to see the tenacity, the want to, and the drive from them. Uh, and right there, you know, just showing that you may, you may get your throw off, but you're going to take a little bit of damage from it. And it really affected the throw, made it go wide. Big third down and 10 coming up here. Two receivers to each side, single back in the backfield. Right, plants at the 20. Turns up field, he's got a running room, trying to get to the stick, and he is hit. He'll be short of the first down as he's hit at the 37 and dropped there. Coming in on the play, Damon Harris along with Ochoa and Clithero. So converging on there. So now we got a fourth down coming up. You think we've said those, those names a few yeah. times tonight? Indeed. Big play here, Stephen. Yeah, this is, this is one that you want, you got to have. Trips to the far side, single receiver to the near side, single back in the backfield is Davis. Here's right, bringing the house, Westwood shows it. Now they back the backers off. Another look over to the sideline here for right. Play clock at 10. Now under center, dropping back out of the gun. Same formation. Running back shifts over to the right side. Four-man front from Westwood. Snap is good. Here's a pass, cutting over the middle. That one a nice play for a first down all the way down to the 41-yard line. Drew it up nicely, and it's Kolbacher that hauls it in. Yeah, de defense brought the house there. Uh, just a quick, quick release from, from right to get that little two-step slant in right at the sticks. Line of scrimmage now the 42. Here's right. Trips to the far side. Kolbacher here to the near side. Davis in the backfield. And right now shifts back, awaits the snap. Play clock at 12. Takes a snap, looks. Looking for the deep ball, hit as he throws by Brown once again, and this one long throws it into double coverage. As he had Jones back there in the coverage along with Colvin. We're going to see a lot more pressures on the quarterback because they're going to have to air it out and score quickly with this clock still moving just in about 10 minutes. He's going to have to sit back in the pocket and let his receivers get downfield a little bit, and your pocket isn't going to last that long against this front four. Same formation, single receiver to the near side, trips to the far side. Here's the pressure coming. They draw up a little underneath pass, complete, and that will go to midfield as a penalty marker comes in at the end of the play. About an eight-yard gain before the penalty as he drops it off to Mitchell. And we'll wait on the call. This is in the area of holding, usually. Uh, I, I agree with that. I think that's what we're going to get. That is indeed the call. So that one there, we, we joke about it all the time here on these broadcasts. It's like, eh, you know, when that hole mysteriously opens up, probably somebody grabbing onto something. And that's at every level. Sure Every thing. level of this game. It's one of those where it looks like you, you're you not going to get anything, and then all of a sudden you're busting down Boom, the field. Boom, 20 yards. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's got to be um, yeah. something going on. Yeah, and one of, one of your linemen has a defensive guy's piece of his jersey in his hand. So this will make it second down in about 15. Here's right, looking, he escapes Brown that time, turns up field, breaks a tackle at the 35 yard line, all the way down to midfield, finding the far sideline. Here's Jones over and finally driven out of bounds, running through a bunch of hand tackles. Here comes a penalty marker at the end of the play. Disastrous play for the Westwood defense. And you're gonna have to think that's probably gonna be a late hit or a tackle out of bounds. Um, and that's something we haven't seen from Wright all game. We haven't seen his ability to run, and it looked like he was uh, pun completely intended here, dead to rights back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, couldn't quite bring him down, and then he made a couple of moves up here that would have broken some ankles on the hardwood. Yeah, absolutely. But time and time again, we've seen it. They give it up the big play, and then they 
they come back and they respond and they don't give up that score. So let's see if they can do it again. They're very capable and we've seen it all night. First and 10, red zone opportunity at the 15. So the defense on their heels just a tad bit and probably just a little gassed. This one here, that play right there took a bunch out of this defense. Here's the first down play, here's right. Two receivers to the near side, drops, looks, plants. That one complete over the middle. And that'll be about a three yard gain. Gonna get juked, he's going to break down and he's gonna make sure that he tackles you and wraps you up and brings you down. You never wanna try and, and juke him because it, it isn't gonna happen. Right. Demetrius Jones is pleading his case. I don't know if this is going to be a holding call on him. Well, they were talking to, to Coach Wood about marching it back. Yeah, there oh, we there go. go. Okay. So he wasn't pleading his case. He's just checking in. He's just chatting, just yeah. chatting up. You know, we've seen we've seen his personality down here on the sideline. Yeah. You know, he's probably just having a good uh -huh. time. He's like, yeah, where where are you going after the game? We're we're going to the dance or whatever these guys do after the, whatever they do after the game these days. <laughs> they have many, they have many uh, high school dances. I don't anymore. know. Yeah, I don't even know if they still do that. I'm showing my age here. I'm forget about all that. They play Michael Jackson's "Beat It" at those dances. Here's right, dropping back, looking. Second down and 16. Pass complete out of the backfield, turning upfield. Another penalty marker over here in the backfield. As this time he completes it to Devin Quintana. And this will be an easy holding call against Austin High. Austin High shooting themselves in the foot here on this drive. Well, that's the thing. Every time that we see that Wright has some time to throw, it seems as though there's a holding call because there's, that's all you can do to stop these front, this front four is, is you got to hold them or they're going to get past you. And we've, we, we see, we've seen it all night, and we've seen it just in these past two plays. Flores and Brown weren't on the field on that play, and now they've checked back in along the front. I'm getting a little rowdy here at Dr. R.L. Peters, Junior's Field. Junior Field. Junior's Junior. <laughs> like Carl's Jr. Second down in, I don't know, about 26, 27. Here's right, looking, pressure coming, unloads, throws to the far side, a jump ball in the end zone, incomplete. Great coverage back as he was looking for Sawyer Berry. That's our boy Zach Hoover right Once there. Once again. He is, he is just all over everybody in the secondary and just gets up there. Makes a good jump at the ball and swats it away. And that'll bring up third down and 27. And the nice thing for the defense, the tempo has slowed down. So they're getting a, getting a couple of breaths here in between. You got your front four in there. Harris, Hawkins, Brown, and Flores. So here's third and 27. They try to draw up a screen out of the backfield. Ethan Brown once again swarming in on the running back, Grayson Davis. He and read drops that one. him for a loss. Read that one like a book. He he took, he got past the he got past the offensive lineman. Took a jab step at right. Right thought he was coming at him. Tried to loft the ball over him. Completes the pass, but he knew it was he knew it was screen all the way. Brown, contender for MVP. You got so many of them on defense here tonight. Fourth down and thirty. The line of scrimmage is now the thirty-six. Here's right dropping back. Pressure coming. Eludes. He will be brought down. Breaks a tackle from Flores, now spins over to the left side, throws just shy of the first down as he does get the pass complete to Sawyer Berry. Penalty marker down there right by the, right where the pass was completed. Maybe an offensive pass interference. Perhaps out of bounds and back in. I think it's actually against Westwood. Let's take a look. Well, I'll tell you, this would be a killer right here yeah, if this, after would. all that. Pass interference against oh, the defense. Man. Jeez. Automatic first down. That is that is a killer. That's a gut punch right there. Jackson Metzger into the ball game. Man. Off a of fourth and 30. And a penalty. We'll get Austin High a first down. Clock stops. 7.29 remaining. Still 42 to 28. I guess the only we'll, positive you can take away is that that clock is still running and they still haven't put the ball in the end zone. Defense is probably pretty tired here, but they're going to have to stand up and, and keep doing what they've been doing here inside their own red zone. 
Here's Austin High lining up. Single receiver or single receiver to the far side. Trips to the near side. Single back in the backfield is Davis. Across the line. Let's see if there's a penalty. Jump ball. Free play. That one up over the head of Kalbacher. And we'll see if Westwood was drawn. And they are not. They were not. Boy, so back-to-back -back penalties here. Penalties are killer. And th this is the stuff you have to clean up. Especially as you get ready to go into district competition. Cannot um, have these. you got, got to be got to be more disciplined. And that, that was the first little mistake we saw from the defensive line there, jumping off sides. But... So they set it down at the Westwood 16. Now first and five with 7.24 remaining. 14-point lead for Westwood. Here's Wright dropping back. Throws underneath, complete out of the backfield. Davis breaks a tackle, gets away from Clitheroe, and will make his way into the end zone. 16 yards for Grayson Davis. And Austin High has clawed their way back into this. And you go from fourth and 30 to first and five on the 16. That's just really going to kill your momentum. You know, you, you kind of saw it on the on the defense there. They were really disappointed in the in the penalty there and, and probably pretty tired because they'd yeah. been out there oh, yeah. for a long time. Jonathan Bryant for the extra point, and oh, how important are these extra points now? Yes, they are. Let's see if number 11 can get him one. He looks ready. Barry will set it down. Good snap. Here's the dive, but it's up and good. 7-16 remaining. It's 42-35. to 35. Austin High has marched back. And this game's still in doubt. You really need a good sustained drive here from your offense. Don't get too cute. Don't try and be something you're not. Stick to what you've been doing all game. Run the ball. Run the ball until it opens up. And uh, I think uh, I think they should really stick to more of uh, more of the more of the short passes and the checkdowns that were really working in the first quarter, second quarter, um, and and early on in that first possession of the, of the second half. They'll drop Jing back along with Anderson to so get ready to kick it off. 42 to 35, and that drive there for Westwood, as we've talked about, man. Middle mistakes will get you every time. Getting ready to kick it off once again. And again, got to be careful Kelly. of that onside kick. Yeah. And this one, they'll kick it deep. That one up over the head of Jing. And goes out of bounds. So it'll be good field position here for Westwood. So now the key for the Westwood offense, one, you got to hold on to the ball. Chew up as much of that clock as you can. And oh, by the way, while you're at it, probably be good to get some points. Be real nice to get a to get a little insurance policy here on this drive. Um, a good good long sustained drive, maybe chew up four, mm -hmm. preferably five minutes, and then add another seven points on the board. But we'll see. The last the last few times they've kind of been stymied here on offense, but we know they have it in them to to, to put that drive together and uh, see if they've got. They got it between the ears. Austin High defense pretty fired up over on the other sideline. They're jumping up and down. Trips to the near side, single back in the backfield. Here is the give. Mario Debs finds running room, bounces out all the way to the 40. First and 10, he gets 10, they'll move the sticks. It's exactly what you want to see on the first play of this, of this oh so critical drive. You know, just give it to the guy you've been leaning on all night. Let him get 10 yards, settle down the offense. You know, you've moved the chains once. Kind of getting out, getting out of your own, uh, out of your own into the field, and and um, let that clock run. Let that clock run. Deb stays in the game. Mazzola and Hegde here to the near side. Jing over to the far side. Ian Cox, the fourth receiver, that's actually going to line up in the slot over on the right side. He doubles as a blocker. Here's Martinez awaiting the snap. Gives it to Debs. Big hole running off a of left guard. He's got running room in midfield. Over into the Austin High side of the field. Down to the 43-yard line. Back-to-back -back plays. Move the sticks. Mario Debs used the workhorse. Great, great running from Debs like he's done all night. Get two big runs in there. Just a quick 25 yards to his stat line. 
get him a quick breather, bring in Anderson, and it's going to be the same thing. He's going to be able to do the exact same thing that Debs does, and he's going to be able to move those, move those chains, run that clock, score those points. Three timeouts for both teams here as we work the clock. 6.23 remaining in the ballgame. Seven-point lead for the Warriors. Two receivers to the near side. Single receiver to the far side. Anderson in the backfield. Have to think you're going to give it to number four. They do, and he's got running room out past the 40, inside the 40, to the 38-yard line. Five yards. You get half of what you need. Brings up second down and five. You love to have that. This is where what we talked about a little bit last week. When you get later in the game, this is where your conditioning, uh, the conditioning of the hamburgers up front, man, they've just been leaning on that defensive line all night, and you can kind of see they're starting to win more battles on every down and get more and more rushing yards per carry. Here's Martinez from the 38. As he stands, two receivers split to this side, single receiver to the far side, going right to left here in the fourth quarter. RJ takes a snap. He will give it to Anderson. Anderson shakes and bakes and rocks and rolls down to the 36. They'll probably give him the forward progress for a gain of two. And it'll bring up a third down. Third down and probably about three. Big third down coming up. And you know who they're bringing in for third down mm -hmm. on a big play. Mm -hmm. 21, yes, Mr. Indeed. Debs coming in. Debs checks back in. Hegde Mazzola to this side. Jing to the far side, there's Cox. This is where you can utilize Cox. Line him up as a tight end. An extra tackle over on the far side. Jing the motion man straight across. Here's Martinez. Quick pass out of the backfield. That one, an easy hitter. It's actually Jing. Jing all the way across the field to make that catch. Yeah, send him in motion. See if you've got that man coverage on him. He's just going to beat his man to the flat, and that's the same throw Martinez has been making all night. And again, that one right on the money. Move the sticks. Inside the 30, they spot him at the 29-yard line, 447 showing on the game clock. Three timeouts for Austin, three timeouts for Westwood. In the game is Debs. Single receiver to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Have to think as they motion Cox across, he'll line up on the far side. That you'll stick with the running game. There's Debs, they whistle this one dead. And Austin High says it's against Westwood. Again, Westwood leads this all-time series 7-1. to one. Interesting stat. The one game that Austin High did win, overtime thriller, they were coached by L.D. Williams, who is currently on Anthony, Anthony Wood's staff. So the new line of scrimmage is a 34. And it'll be first and 15. Here's Martinez. Two to the far side, rolling. Well, he's going to keep it himself. Turns upfield at the 30. Breaks away from a shirt tail tackle and spins out of bounds to 26. You got to think about the only thing wrong he did there was go out of bounds. Yeah, he was gone. If, if, uh, if he doesn't get his shirt grabbed, he, was, he had a lot of green in front of him with one man to beat. And if I've seen Martinez run, which I have, he'll, he'll make you miss. Yeah, absolutely. Six-yard gain, second down and nine. Line of scrimmage is the 28. You have to think even in this position, depending how these next few downs shake out, Cactus Jack Elliott could factor into this. You know, he, he really is absolutely could factor into it, and, and I'm sure that, that Coach Wood is, is happy to have him back there kicking. Martinez throwing a deep ball over on the far side, leads him just a little long as he was looking for Mohan Hegde over on the far side. Pardon me, that was not Mohan Hegde. Hegde's here on the near side. He was looking for Mazzola. And third down and nine coming up. And I understand I understand the one-on-one -on -one coverage, but I'm not really sure I'm a big fan of that play call in this yeah. situation. Second and nine, maybe go get a couple more of those penalty yards back, get ahead of the, ahead of the sticks. Third and four, where if you take that shot then, then you have a fourth and four coming up that, that you can that it's manageable. Um, but he almost connected on it. Could yeah. have been a could have been a big play. If he makes the you know, if he catches the ball, I'm over here hooping and high fiving and, and saying that Coach Wood is, is a genius and a mastermind for calling that play then. So <laughs> well, situational. And a timeout taken by Westwood. They wanted to dial the right thing up right here with a third and nine coming up. Do you want to remind you, friends? 
sports, family, senior pictures, all of that. Jenny Ray, longtime photographer of Westwood football, Westwood Athletics. Athletics. That is what Jenny offers. Specializes in Austin sports photography. She's done it for a long time. She does it right, and she does it good. You can find her online. Photography by Jenny Ray. Dot Zenfolio.com. That's Jenny Ray, J E N N Y R H E A. Jenny Ray. And if you're here at the ball field, as they call it, you'll see her running around here. Another one of our great Westwood supporters for many, many years. Thanks to Jenny for all of her great work over the years. Warriorsports.org, the official website of Westwood Warrior Football Booster Club. Big play coming up here, Stephen and Sang. Third and nine, Westwood leads by seven. Lead looked insurmountable a little bit ago. And just a, a few quick bang, bang, bang down the field. A couple mental mistakes from, from the Westwood defense. Puts Austin High right back in it, but this is this is a monster play here. Two receivers to each side. Single back in the backfield is Anderson. He now shifts in motion here to the near side. Martinez drops, throwing the deep ball. Hegde beats the coverage, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Westwood. 28 yards, Mohan Hegde. First touchdown of the year for number nine. Didn't I tell you that Coach Wood should take a shot on the previous two plays to the end zone? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, he's a genius. That's why he's calling That's the right. plays. That's right. That's why he's been here 14 years. Huge play right there. And just an absolute dime of a throw over the top of the defender. Great catch. Really, really needed that play. Cactus Jack with a valuable extra point to stay perfect on the season. Got to have them. And one thing we've noticed all night when we needed big plays, and Coach Wood calls that timeout, he's drawn up and called the right play. And I think all three times they've gotten either a first down and two of those three, I think he scored touchdowns on them. Huge one right there. Now you put it back in the hands of the defense with a little bit of a cushion as it stretches back out to 14 points, 49 to 35, Westwood leads. And talk about a good game. Cedar Ridge, Cedar Park, seven minutes to go. Cedar Ridge, 34, Cedar Park, 28. Yeah, I gotta keep, gotta keep an eye on that one. And uh, I, gotta, I gotta give one, one big shout out here. We got a whole, a whole good number of people in the stands here. And I have, got, I have yet to see this Westwood student section sit down. <laughs> they have been out yeah, here yelling and, and getting rowdy for their, for their boys. And uh, so, big shout out to uh, to yeah, those to those folks over there. That's the tribe. They look like they're the tribe. They look yeah. like they're having a, a great time over there. They definitely support their football team. And Jack Elliott's going to kick it off. Big stand for the defense coming up. Here's Elliott. Kicks it short. Fair catch called for and made at the thirty. Ball on the ground. That's Coke. Let's get to the bottom of the pile. He nonchalantly did a fair catch, and I think Westwood may have this. That was a live ball. Let's take a look as they clear the scrum. Who's stronger than who down there at the bottom? Oh, you can just imagine what's going on down there. Westwood football. The Warriors come up with it. No, sig no official signal yet from the refs, but Westwood did have the ball coming out of the scrum, but I think they're giving it Looks like Jaleel Davis, number 40. But let's wait. <laughs> Cap's still on, headset's off, get ready. <laughs> wait for it. Nope. There it there is it right there. <laughs> it has, has, hasn't been thrown yet, but the cap is off. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, this is gonna be Austin football. And this discussion far from over. Or is this a re-kick? Well, let's go to Anthony over to the sideline. And the return team is set back out for Austin. But you did see coming out of the bottom of the pile, it was Jaleel Davis. As it was Coke calling the fair catch and just very... Gingerly, the ball comes out of his hands. There was no doubt who had the ball coming out of the pile. It's just a matter of did he jump on it or did he rip it out of someone's hands underneath there? And it looks like we've elected to kick her again. Re kick it. So here comes the special forces back out. 
Here's Koch at the 30. Be a good time to hit him with an onside kick. Austin High's waiting for that. Same time, pin him far back. Many options, many options here. Well, you, it's always nice to have so many options when you've got such a good kicker. Mm -hmm. So here's Elliott. Short kick. Coke once again, this time he squats into it, <laughs> and it'll be first down Austin at the 33-yard line. Yeah, he made sure he didn't drop that one because he didn't want to get get uh, extra laps on Monday at practice yeah, for dropping Coach, another one. Coach Rosenthal get after him, man, and you, you, you would have to feel for him had that stood. I mean, had that stood, you're super excited if you're a Westwood fan, but you'd have to feel for that young guy. He hadn't dropped anything all yeah, night. He, that's exactly right. He is – he is the sole, yeah. the sole yeah. purpose that they are still in this game yeah. with four touchdowns tonight, four of the five right. tonight. And you know, had he had had he had we not had to re-kick that one, his first drop of the night being that would just have been a, a devastating for the young man there. But that's not the way it goes, and the defense comes back out. Two timeouts for Austin High, two or three for Westwood. And here's Wright, takes a snap. Three-step drop looking, pressure coming once again. There's a hole there from Flores, and he drops Wright, even from being held. Comes around the edge, breaks out of a hold. And that hold was bigger than daylight. And yeah, well, right, right in front of Coach, and he's sitting there screaming at the line judge. And uh, was that Brown? That's Flores. Flores, and he said, fine, hold me. I'm still going to get my sack. Man, Flores, and he got him with one hand and had the wherewithal to not grab him by the shoulder pads. 10-yard loss, second down and 20, trips to the near side. Here's Wright looking, flings this one down in the dirt. He was looking for his man over on the far side, Sebastian Garcia. No, nope, that was not Garcia. That was actually a three. That's Barry. Clock stops, 3.43 remaining, third down and 18. Line of scrimmage at 25. Four-man front here from the Warriors. They got the hosses in there. Here comes Brown once again. This one out of the backfield, Vicente Ochoa, great open field tackle on the ball carrier. And that's a linebacker on a running back, Davis. You have to assume at halftime, uh, the coaches were talking about how to defend that screen the right way because they have defended it perfectly in the second half. And um, you could see that adjustment coming out of the locker room. Could be the ball game right here. Fourth down and 15, 314 as the clock rolls. Snap high, right? Able to bring it down on a tip drill. Throws a long ball into, in and out of the hands of Cam Colvin over on the far side. Let's make sure that was fourth down, right? Yeah, so the ball goes over on downs. We have had issues with counting yeah. this evening. So yeah. I don't know if that wasn't a, uh, was a Colorado fifth down situation. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. I swear that was two third downs all the I, I agree, but uh, great defensive stand. And, and once again, you know, your offense gives you a cushion. Allows your defense to pin your ears back, get after the quarterback, turn over on downs, and uh, run the ball here, run this clock down, and see if you can put a 50 spot on the board, I guess. Yeah, right. 3.06 or, remaining. As they used to say, uh, as, as Barry Switzer used to say at the University of Oklahoma, hang a half a hundred on it. Mm-hmm. Here comes the Westwood offense back out. Now in the backfield is Lyndon Jones. Our first peek at him in the backfield here tonight. And it will be Jones. Jones with a big hole right up the middle and gets inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. So welcome to the ball game, Lyndon Jones. There's your shifty back right there, your chains of pace. Yeah. Man, we haven't seen him, but a run like that, he might be earning some snaps. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Three-headed monster. Timeout taken by Austin. They call that the Hydra. Yeah, right? 2.43 remaining, 49 to 35. Again, game not over, but you have to be breathing a little easier now if you're a Westwood fan. Oh, I tell you, this fourth quarter. Had its ups and downs. Take the life out of you. Take a look here, see if there's still anything happening in 13.68 besides us. There's still 34 to 28, Cedar Ridge on top of Cedar Park. Finals. Round Rock falls to Belton, 45 to 24. Stony Point beats Harker Heights, 45 to 22. 
And McNeil beats Glenn 25 to 14. Nice job by Glenn. Glenn, their first year of varsity football. And they've stayed close in their first two games. Well, you know, it's tough on your first your first year, first year head coach, new facilities, new players that I don't really, you know, haven't really got together that mm -hmm. much. And just to be able to keep those games close, you gotta you gotta give it up for those young men. Here's a second down and one play coming up. And it is Debs back in the ball game. And he just keeps running. Oh, is that Lyndon Jones? I believe that was three getting the ball okay. in again. Lyndon okay. Jones. Yep, you got it. Jones all the way down to the 10. Oh, I'll tell you. Lyndon Jones. Yeah, Lyndon Jones wearing gloves. Hold on to that ball, Petey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I hope those things get a good grip. First and 10, clock rolling, 225 remaining. Here's Jones once again. And he gets to the nine-yard line. Almost gets away from the pile there. It'll blow him dead on his forward progress, but he looked like he might have scored it out there. He, he wants to get him a touchdown tonight. Shoot, yeah. Five-yard gain. He'd be the third back into the end zone tonight if he does. And the fifth or four, fourth or fifth overall player to score or sixth? Yeah, we've got a couple of oh, just a huge successful program at Navarro. He moves to Hayes and... 25-6A is, is as loaded as 13-6A. These are, these are some cool, as you mentioned, nine-team districts. Defense has made their way back out. Second down and six from the eight-yard line with 2.14 to go. 49-35 to here from Dragon Stadium. Game number two of the season here for Westwood. Here's Martinez. Jones in the backfield. Tell him, get closer. Stop right there. Here's the snap. Gives it to Jones. Bounces inside the five down to the four. Really like what they did there. The backers all pulled forward and hit the B gap, and Jones ran right by him. And that'll be the last time out of the ball game for Austin High. Clock stops with 2.04 remaining. So imagine at this point you just healthy dose of Lyndon Jones and get this one in the books. And really uh, a great performance all around from the team tonight. Um, you really like what you see, spreading the ball around. Um, but again, like we talked about last week, at the end of the game, there's still things to work on. You know, you never want to be perfect, quote unquote, in your second game of the season. You like to see things you can work on, things you can improve. And uh, there's definitely some of those that we saw tonight, but you score 49 points in a game, you're never going to complain. Right, right. Really liked what uh, Coach Wood said in the chat with the Chief. He asked that old coaching cliche, you know, they say you get better from game one to game two. Right. He said what, what we like to see is we like to see technique getting better. We get better all the time, but technique, you want to see that improving. Because now you've had the live game action. You've been under the lights. You've hit somebody else. And we have seen improvements. You want to see the fine tune of everything exactly. as you go. Like. Exactly. Hit that frequency. Third and two from the five-yard line. You can get a first down without scoring. Here's Jones brought down from behind. That's a great play there by Austin High. Coming in on the stop, 58, Austin Duke Breckert. And that'll bring up fourth and two. We're going to get some leg work here. Yep, Austin High is out of timeout, so Martinez stays on the field. Oh, they're just bringing in the big boys for the big boy package. Yep. Bring in the biggins. Clock just rolling right along. They're going to let that take its time. Clitheroe in the backfield. Imagine they'll run right here. Oh, Martinez a little trouble with the snap as he's going to lunge forward, and he will be stopped. It's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Always tough when the ball comes dribbling along the carpet on the snap. Yeah, they, you, you, you could think, uh, I mean, I would think that they were going to give the ball there either on a play action to Anderson running the, the, the jet sweep and uh, Martinez was going to take it mm -hmm. or they were going to give it to Anderson. And either way, I think that, I think that was the, either one of those plays was going to work there. Yeah. And uh, just unfortunate, the snap was a little low. Um, but, you know, 
you ran out a good number, of, a good amount of clock. 120 left, up by two scores. Just don't give up. You know, don't let anything get over your head here. Play good fundamental defense. Make your tackles. Keep everyone towards the middle of the field. Let that clock run and and um, just get out of here with that W. Yeah, and and you pin them back at their own six. Right, that helps. They had a long way to go. So here's Wright. He's going to be airing this thing out. Empty backfield. Two receivers to the near side, three to the far side, standing on his goal line. Here's Wright looking out of the backfield, turning upfield, takes it at the five, and hit out of bounds, hit hard on the far side. Lots of contact. Penalty marker comes in at the end of the play. He's driven out of bounds at the stick. And that's just an un 15 yards you're going to add on to the end of that play that you just don't need to be giving up at this point in the game. It's unnecessary, and it's just a mental mistake that you really try and weed out. This is, I mean... We've talked about it. this is the last opportunity to tune everything up before district starts, and you really want to eliminate as much of that as possible. And they'll get ready to count that off, and we've seen that a few times here in the fourth quarter. And, I mean, if anything, you hope you're doing that right now and not next week when you start league play, district play. So here's a referee back over. They'll get ready to march this one off. 113 to go. And all the way out to the 33. The new line of scrimmage. So here's Austin High resetting. No timeouts for the Maroons. Single back in the backfield. Trips to the near side. Single receiver to the far side. 113 to go in the ball game. Here's Wright dropping back. Looking downfield. Pressure coming. He'll get dropped once again. This time it's Eric Hawkins. Along with Harris, another sack. That front four has been brutal tonight for Westwood. And just absolutely slamming the door on anything you thought might happen. They got no timeouts. The clock continues to run. And that's exactly what you want to see from your defense right there. Three-yard loss, second and 13 from the 30. Here's Wright, complete over the middle. They'll want to keep him in bounds, give him a couple of yards, let him fall down right there. Short of the first down, spot him at the 38-yard line. Clock rolls, 33 seconds, and it continues to roll. 26 seconds, and here is right back up. Third down and five play. Right drops back, looking downfield, swing pass out complete here at the 38, turning up field. The 45 at midfield, hit by Hoover, and that'll be a first down. Clock will stop momentarily as they move the sticks. Is Quintanilla on the reception? Nice 20 yard gain there. And now the chains reset over on the far side. Now the clock rolling. We're inside 10 seconds to go. Austin High will have time for one more play. Trips to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Looking downfield right. Throws this one out of the backfield. In and out of the hands of Jones or Davis. And that will do it. A late rally from Austin High. But Westwood slams the door here at the end of the fourth quarter to win it over the Maroons by a final score of 49 to 35. Another complete ball game for Westwood and the Warriors head to 2-0 as we get ready for district play. Warriors win it here at Dragon Stadium tonight. We'll take a quick break, we'll come back, we'll recap, take a quick look at the Whataburger scoreboard and take a look at next week. Warriors win 49 to 35. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the state capital if it was full of sports. I mean, the rotunda is more than large enough for basketball or volleyball. And let's face it, anything we do in there is going to be better than what's going on right now. Plus, those guys only work every two years. We bring your teams to you every doggone day. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. Westwood Warriors Sports Network, WWSN, powered by KMAC Sports on the Vipe Sports Network final from Dragon Stadium tonight. The Westwood wins to go 2-0, 49-35 over the Austin High Maroons out of District 25-6A in a great performance by Westwood once again as we bring you back here to Dragon Stadium. And, Stephen, tonight another tale of a pretty complete ball game. If you find any negative there, it's just a little bit of sloppy play right at the end of that contest. Yeah, really, really impressed with how this team came out and handled the, the quick adversity. They were they, The onside kick that we talked about in the beginning 
really kind of shook shook him off, uh, took caught him off guard, and and they really had to settle into themselves. But it didn't take them long, and that's something mm-hmm. you really you really like to see. You know, obviously heading into district play next week, um, really like to see that um, whenever they face a little bit of adversity, they have the ability to just kind of take a deep breath and look and say, okay, well, we know who we are. We're going to stick to what we know. And um, what they know is to score a lot of points and to play hard-nosed ball hawk defense. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And, and we see it again tonight. You know, we've talked about, you know, for, probably for some people, that nauseum about R.J. Martinez, uh, uh, the poise, the command, the leadership that, that he has shown. And again tonight, whether it be throwing the football or running it or just guiding the team, really seems to be the total package back there uh, commanding this offense. And really, I think – the, the best part of that is, you know, it, it's great to see him have some, some good wheels and, and, and a good arm and everything. But, but really, whenever you talk about leading the team and, and he's got that demeanor where you, you just never see him flustered or frustrated. And you may get some of that out of some of your other players on the, on the offense. But whenever they can look back at their quarterback and see he's just standing back there calm, cool, mm-hmm. collected, moving on to the next play – that really helps settle down everyone else. And for a sophomore to be able to have that kind of composure and poise in the backfield in a big moment like this is is something that they've really got to appreciate and understand that it's not it's it's not uh, usual, I, I guess yeah. I can say. And yeah. and they've got they've got something special in RJ Martinez and he proves he's proved it the past two weeks and um, he's gotta continue to continue to do it and keep Keep showing everyone that, that he's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, and, and it'll get uh, it'll get really interesting next week. We'll talk about that here in, in just a couple of minutes. Quick look at the Whataburger scoreboard around the area. Game still in progress. Got a good one going on. Uh, one of these we, we talked about. One of the uh, Cedar Ridge or, or or Cedar Park being zero and two. One of these Eagle teams is going to be two and zero, which would be great for both of these programs. Aikens leads Cedar Creek. That's a fourteen to thirteen score in the fourth quarter. Uh, also still in progress, about a minute to go. It looks like Cedar Park will be the 0-2 team. 34-28 to as Cedar Ridge leads there. A uh, couple of games still in delay. Uh, taking a look at your finals. Again, from last night, Colleen beats Vista Ridge 43-6. to Bastrop all over Reagan 61-3. to Westlake falls to Cy Ranch by a score of 25-21. to So Todd Dodge and the Chaparrales go down. Look at this score. Talk about a defensive battle. Coppers Cove 7, Maynard 6. Jeez Louise, that's Green Bay Packer football from the old days. Vandergriff wins again, 28-12 over Colleen Ellison. Uh, Pflugerville does beat Leander. They do get that one in, 37-20. Hutto over Liberty Hill, 52-51. Wow. So the climb and the story of the Hutto Hippos continues with a big win as they were trailing in that contest earlier. They were trailing big earlier. They were. They certainly were. Uh, Del Valley now 2-0 as they win 26-21 over Conley. Hayes beats Dripping Springs 35-34. Man, good stuff tonight. Uh, Smithville over Lanier. 48 to nothing. McCallum over Lehman, 40 to 27. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Look here, saying Lockhart and Taylor. Huge battle over at the brand new Duck Pond and Taylor. Taylor, 30. Lockhart, 29. Oh, yeah. Holy moly. The ducks pulled out. Look at that. Midlothian over Shoemaker, 36 to 7. Georgetown over Waco, 17 to 7. Your score there. San Marcos falls to Johnson out of San Antonio. That's a 48 to 28 score. Bowie over Madison, 49 to 22. Round Rock falls to Belton, 45 to 24. Temple over, don't know who they were playing. It was a non UIL opponent there. Stony Point over Harker Heights, 45 to 22. Rouse falls to Anderson, 25 to 20. Uh, other action Florence falls to Gerald, 48 to 15. And I believe that will do it for our Whataburger scoreboard. We, we actually can go a little further out, and we'll get uh, the score that you were looking Let's for see. here in, in just a second. Let's see. Game's was, still in progress. It was a little rough there at halftime. I, mean, yeah, let's I don't know if it would have gotten any better. Take a look through here. It must be a final already. We'll dig through it yeah, here. That, that clock tends to move quickly whenever it's uh, yeah, yeah, when it gets, blowout like that. Yeah, when it gets that. a little bit out of hand. But moving forward to next week, so two and zero, a couple of a couple of big wins here for a couple of big wins there for for Westwood. But now you get set and, and you've got your confidence where you need it, and and two and zero, that's a great start. But now you get ready to go, and ooh, 
getting 63, Wimberley 13. That's it doesn't happen very often. No, it doesn't. That, that but uh, does not happen very often. But back here. Um, our, oh yeah. So so Hendrickson. <laughs> you get Hendrickson. The and pesky Hawks. Yeah, the pesky Hawks, and and that that has been a team that since they, since Hendrickson has come out, I think Westwood beat them beat them once. One time, yes, sir. Westwood has beat them once, and and Hendrickson. It's just that's one of the teams that as the season started statewide. Folks have talked about Hendrickson being a team that could make a really deep playoff run. And you start district playing those guys. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's one. Yeah, I mean that's that's it's a tough challenge. But both of these tune-up games, we keep, we we keep calling them tune-up games, but really they're mm -hmm. they're real they're really really important games and, and and tough opponents that you're playing. And this this Westwood team looks like they're they're putting in the work and they're and they're up for up for the challenge. You know, again, this team tonight, Austin High. Is in twenty five six A one of one of the most loaded districts. Yep. Um, and 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 like you talked about earlier, they're sitting in probably one of those bubble playoff spots, which is very difficult to do. This is a high quality opponent. That, Absolutely. That they just put up forty nine points against, and and that's that's something that's going to build confidence, um, and 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 really drive this team. I think uh, into next week into district play. And um, there's just something – there's a different feel around this team whenever they've got the ability to run, throw, mm -hmm. um, sack the quarterback, not give up large plays in, 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 in large quantities. And, and if they, they put their, their mind to it and work during this next week and get the right game plan, um, you never know what can happen. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and we've talked about 13-6A, the balance of power with all of that. We've seen – We've seen Cedar Ridge maybe a little susceptible. Of course, the competition they've been playing has been just massive. So, so obviously, uh, they're probably very, very good. And and Hendrickson, they're they're the others. But from there on, Stony Stony Point's two and zero, oh, and 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 Leander wins wins tonight. But at Westwood's two and zero. Oh. Um, you know, from third on down, this thing again. You don't. We're not even in the district yet. You don't want to start projecting playoffs, but it's there for the taking. It's certainly there for the taking, and the beautiful thing about this this Westwood team, what I really like, Stephen, is they're so young. They're so young, and they're playing confident, and that's huge. And I couldn't I couldn't agree more with you um, on on both of the points you just made. Um, they they are young, and and you're seeing the young guys step up and make the plays when they need to, and just being able to get that experience in in moments like this will really mature them quickly. And, and by the time they they get to the end of the season or, or the middle of the season, that'll be like any other down to them. A, you know, a fourth and two on the goal line up by three when you need a stop to win, there won't be any jitters because right. that'll just be normal. And that's something that um, you really can't plan for, but whenever you get it, you just got to hold on to it and be thankful that you have it. Uh, and to your other point about how the the playoffs are there for the taking. Anything's possible when you're two and zero. When you start two and zero, um, and I know these games aren't district games, and, and we'll see what that kind of shapes up to look like next week. But you got to you got to go out there week to week, not overlook anybody or not go in thinking that you're not good enough. This team mm -hmm. is good enough. We've seen it in the past two weeks. They're good enough to play with anybody when they're clicking on all cylinders, and um, as long as they come in and have the have the composure they've had the past two games i really think that they'll be able to put up good fights with everybody here in this district and and get to the point where they're feeling comfortable about making the playoffs yeah yeah absolutely we'll get ready to wrap up our post game show is this one running just a little bit late again the final 49 to 35 westwood wins they are 2 and 0 broadcast presented by the westwood football booster club warriorsports.org the official website of westwood warrior football and the booster club big thanks to the sponsors of the Booster Club, ATX Football, the Austin Youth Football League, Fabulous Affairs Catering, Flicks Brew House, Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin, Torchy's Tacos right there at Anderson Mill and 620, as well as Whataburger right there at 620 and Lake Creek, and as well, Jenny Ray Photography, warriorsports.org, if you would like to be a business sponsor or individual sponsor of Westwood Football. District starts next week. It will be, here's the nice part, 7 o'clock kickoff. We go back to 7 o'clock for district play. 6.45 our pregame, our chat with the Chief, 
It's going to be a good test, a really good measure and stick for Westwood as they get ready to take on Hendrickson. A big thanks to Mike Miller back at the KMAC Sports Vite Media Studios, our quality administrator, taking care of business for us over on the other end tonight. Of course, we thank KMAC Sports President Chuck Licata, hey, as well as Director of Programming Merle Bertrand, Christina Weber, our social media director, and, of course, Suna Venkat. She helped me out during the week with some technical stuff that I messed up. That, that she and Sang figured out uh, a little bit earlier today, as well as Tim Cox, great folks right there. Dr. Sang Cow, twisting and tweaking the knobs, making sure it was all nice and smooth. Dr. Sang, we thank you so much for your great work, as always, my friend. Best as, in the business. Best in the business. Stephen Kabler with us, man. Gl glad you're aboard here, man. You you were lights out, brother. You were doing some great work. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to be here, ready for district play starting next week. Absolutely. Going to be a good one. My name is Rodney Rodriguez. We'll catch you 645 pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff. The Warriors take on Hendrickson next week for district play. Have a great weekend, everybody. See ya.